as far as members and things, but we'll see what God says. But we're excited for you guys. Good evening, good evening, good evening, and welcome to this edition of Life Discussions with your girl, Pastor Stacy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and we have our very special guest tonight to talk about marriage and ministry. Does God honor marriage, and how does marriage and ministry coexist together? Yes, yes, yes. I believe we can have it all. We put God first, then family, then career. And if those things are in order, everything else will fall in order. I know. So if you guys would go ahead and introduce yourselves and let the world know who's talking about marriage and ministry on tonight. You go first, man. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Bishop Santonio Eccles. Um, I, we are the pastors of Covenant Worship Center here in Charlotte, North Carolina. And this is my wife, Pastor Martina Eccles, and we are just glad to be here. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share. This is an important topic in the kingdom. Yes, it is. And for we're the happy world. Let me see. Lean back a little bit so we can see your shirts. It look like you're twinning. Oh, I am secure. Wait, wait. I am a secure man. I am a secure woman. Well, here it says I am a secure man married to a strong woman. And okay. mine says, I am a strong woman married to a secure man. Okay, yay. Well, we got our little, I am his queen. And <laughs> I am her king. <laughs> and there it is. <laughs> As my husband says, there's only one king. Glory to God. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Listen, we had five teenagers in our number two son. He's 18, and since he was about 15, he would make the other kids call him Big Daddy. So my husband had to let him know, listen, there's only one Big Daddy in this crib. There's only one king up in here. Well, They'll man, try you. They'll Eddie. try you. <laughs> Look, my so, husband says, uh, when you get your place, you'll be the king of your place. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And that's what I tell, and that's what, we had three boys and two girls, and that's when I tell the girls, like, there's only one queen up in here. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, the I'm day you become king is the day you paying all your bills. <laughs> there it you is. don't live here no more. <laughs> <laughs> and that means not just being of age, because you know when they hit a certain age, people think they're grown, but it's like you're not grown until you holding your own and paying your own way. Ooh. All right. So all of you guys that are watching from Facebook Live, y'all can go ahead and start sharing, like, share, and comment, add your questions, and we'll definitely try to answer as many questions as we can. We thank you all for joining in. So you see me looking over to the side so I can say, hi, Gigi and Tiffany with Tamilia. Hi. So you guys go ahead and ask your questions and we're going to get started. We're going to get started. So can you tell us how long have you guys been married? Um, in this month, it will be 22 years on April 17th. Woo! Awesome. Congratulations, 22 awesome. years. Yes, some people can't make 20 weeks. <laughs> 20 days. Listen, and, and, they, and they've been years. happy years. Amen. And how long have you been in ministry? We've been pastoring uh, 14 years and um, I was ordained in 1999 as an elder. So been in ministry a long time, but grew <laughs> up. we both grew up, you know, in ministry, but as far as, you know, titles. Okay. And you know what? And that's how my husband and I are as well. I was a member of the same church for 38 years, even though I'm only 27. <laughs> for the 13th time. <laughs> and, 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 the, and the church I come from, I was born there, and I was a member there until I moved here. Yeah. I ain't oh. jump, I ain't skip, I ain't hop. I yes. stayed at the same place for 37 years. Yes. Amen. So we are excited 
because not that many people had that testimony. You know that we both, we, we didn't come from the same church, but our churches were like identical. My church was up in North Philly and his was in West Philly. And we both only had one spiritual father um, until we got married, right? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I, yes. I often say um, to people, you know, who authenticated your anointing? Come where on. did you come from? I, I can't just invite you because you are anointed, but I need to know where you've been rooted, where you've been planted, um, so we can trace it. So I, we are for that. And I think that's, that's, that's why. Amen. Tracing, Listen. tracing. tracing is, is humongous. You've got to be able to trace it to the root. Yes, yes. To the root. Come on, mother. <laughs> you got to understand what's being deposited into your people, and not just the people, God's people, but um, whoever may be there, your children. Oh my God. I mean, they absorb everything. And everything. So who's, who's gonna protect them? Who's gonna cover it, cover them, especially as it pertains to ministry? And so anyway, who authenticated you? I need to know where you were rooted, where did you come from? And listen, are there are there um, leaves on the tree or is there fruit? <laughs> well, you know, speaking for myself, I come from uh, um, his late, our grace, Bishop James McNeil Jr., which is my aunt dad. Um, he had uh, prophesied my life in this world <laughs> to my parents before I was born. And um, both of my parents had passed by the time I was 17 and my mother left instructions for me to go to him. And he took it from that point on up until the day that I decided to move down here. And um, wow. my wife tried to explain to people, you know, some people say I'm tough. Some people say I'm rough. Some people say, I, you know, on the, rough on the edges. I mean, that's where I come from, you know, like <laughs> old school, you know, just giving it to you. I say, I say you just a man. <laughs> I, I listen, my husband, he's just a man. He's a just straight shooter. He doesn't talk a lot, but I'm telling you, when he's talking, it's full of wisdom. But he knows how to discern game. And oh, it's come very on. important for you to understand game because mm -hmm. people who are coming into ministry, they are not already saved. Yes. And some of them, some of them carry the banner as if they are, but if they are coming to a deliverance ministry, they still have some things on them and you've got to be able to discern the, the game. And I was naive, I would say, um, <laughs> as, as far as the game is concerned, because I'm so for um, seeing people where they can be the potential of where they can be, uh -huh. and, you know, and I had to learn to listen to my husband to say, no, they're after something other than God. I had to learn that they're after you, they're after your oil, but they don't want God. I had to learn that. Amen. And that's so important that you would say that because again, and we're talking about marriage and ministry. And when we anointed, I'm talking about we as women, when we anointed, our husband has anointed, and we can have that attitude, well, God speak to me just like he talked to you. You know, well, God didn't say that to me. And, and sometimes we could struggle with, are you just saying that because you're my man? Or are you saying that, you know, because you hear from God? But when we learn to trust God and to trust the God and the mate that he's given us, and Correct. understand that we are called to be his soulmate. You know, yes. I mean? help yes. me. We ain't here to help us, but we're here. We're, we help each other. But according to the word, we're here to help him. So we got to trust the God that's in him to see the stuff that we don't see. And as women, we're nurturers and we just want to love upon everybody. And we think everybody are genuine and sincere. And I'm the type of person, come on, I invite everybody in. And he'd be like, wait, wait, babe, pause. <laughs> yeah, and it's a difference from, because now when it comes to the pulpit and ministry, I can see. Mm -hmm. if, they got, yes. if it's a demon, I see it. Yes, if yes, it's yes. Like, if it's something hiding, I see it. But when we leave that space, 
I'm just mom. I'm just Pastor M. I'm just, you understand? And so mm-hmm. that's where we have to lean on one another. We submit yes. one, one another, one to submit. another. Yes. Um, headship is not just about gender. It is about the Holy Spirit. So whoever God is using in that moment, you got to submit to his spirit. And it takes um, humility to humble yourself to hear when you think you're right. And, you know, I like to add with what she was just saying. That my father taught me, he said, we got to learn that we can have the last word. And you know what that last word is? Yes, (laughs) ma'am. My God, today. (laughs) We can have the last word. Yes, ma'am. It's just ma'am, you know, because I tell all the time, you know, because, you know, sometimes I'll be having stuff on my mind, you know, she'd be ready to argue, and then I just get quiet, and she's like, you ain't going to say nothing? I just be quiet, you know, I I learn to be quiet, because I come from some strong-willed, strong-mouthed women Mm. in in the Harris family, you know, they'll hurt your feelings if you let them. You listening, I Esther? You hear her? You hear her, I Esther? So she act like them Harris women sometimes. I just go back and be like, mm, okay. But don't they say men marry their mamas, right? <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> That's what they say. Mm-hmm. I, don't I, don't, I don't think he married his mom. His mom was- <laughs> he has some Esther. Ass- attributes of her. But she was um, very delicate. Yeah, I mean, delicate. I am from she a can, feminine. Yes. My wife, can, she can be delicate when she wants to. So. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things, as as the world can see, I am the, the loud one. And like he said, you know, I, I used to, I'm getting better. Rah, 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 rah. And he wouldn't say nothing back. And then that would just make me madder. And then I realized like, girl, you's a whole fool. Cause you can't argue by yourself. You know, he's sitting there nice and calm doing what he's doing. And it really don't has to be an argument. It could just be a discussion. So I had to learn in order to communicate with my man, I have to walk softly, not on eggshells, but if I'm hollering and screaming, he all he hearing, is the, the cartoon, remember the peanuts and the parents will go, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> right. So I had to learn that and it didn't take away from my voice or me getting my point across. I just had to learn how to articulate differently yeah. Yeah. so that he can hear. Now, I'm Y'all hear that, ladies? I, I'm the type of person I'll shut down. Um, okay. So I had to learn how to... Um, not sure, shut down. I was a, um, I, I went, coming up, um, I, I was just a, I don't care. We, you know, <laughs> I don't care, you know, and then, and then just shut down. And so you have to, when you, when you get married or you enter into a relationship, because it's important for you to understand the out attributes of who you're going to marry, um, or even who you are dating. And if there's compatibility there, and sometimes that cap- compatibility has to be that if you are the outgoing one, you may not compare, you may not pair well with another person that's outgoing and right. has a lot of mouth. <laughs> you know, so a lot of times God will send you, if you wait, He will send you who you need for where you're going. And I, I definitely know that that's what God did, you know, for us. He sent us what we need. I am his strength when he's weak and he's my strength when I'm weak. And so that Amen. way we balance one another and we offset um, because it's, it's us, you know, it's not them, you know, sometimes even in ministry, people can try to pit um, the pat, um, pastors who uh, work together in ministry, they can uh, try to pit one another against each other <laughs> you, through, through your ego. But you must get rid of your ego if you're going to enter into ministry together. You, you have to, it's going to change everything about um, marriage. I you know, 
Pastor, I, I, I 110% agree with what you're saying because, um, you know, growing up in ministry and being a part of the first family and all those things. And, you know, uh, you know, I, I started off as a musician and I became a junior deacon and I became a deacon. <laughs> And went on rank. up, went on up, up the ranks. Ranks. <laughs> you know, I ain't just, you know, just jumped up and moved in, you know, <laughs> but it was, it was uh, a transformation for me to, um, had came up under a strong man. Mm -hmm. Then once I got married and moved down here, you know, my father-in-law, Pastor Taylor, strong man. And then when it was time to do ministry, he gave the time to her, not me. So I'm like, I gotta humble myself to a woman. <laughs> Tell me, Jesus, because <laughs> that's not that's not something a lot of men can do, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and it took me time to recognize that this is not just a woman, this is not just my wife, but this is the leader that God has put in line. Yes, and she was an elder much longer than me, you know. She was a preacher much longer than me. Right. So as much as I thought I knew, I really ain't know as much as I thought I knew. Amen. That's right. So I had to go through that process to learn from her that now that this season of my life is coming, I can say I'm really prepared. You know, four mm -hmm. years ago, I thought I was prepared. Mm -hmm. I ain't know nothing. All them years <laughs> in church, all them years in church, and I had no clue about, you know, what real leadership is. Right That's now. because we have to constantly grow and we have to constantly learn. Nobody knows it all. And if anybody out there think you know it all, run. Because <laughs> none of us know, not, nobody knows it all. It was, all the right. same way, it was the same way with me. Um, and, you know, as my shirt says, I'm a secure man. And I think that's the key um, when it comes to uh, couples, men in a relationship. And like you said, your wife being the, uh, uh, the one that has seniority. Um, in ministry, you have, you have to be secure in who you are. And for me, I grew up under a woman pastor. My aunt was the pastor of the church that I grew up uh, under. So, you know, it, it wasn't, you know, strange ground for me uh, when it came time for that, because when we first uh, came into ministry, my wife was the one that was out front more. And, mm -hmm. you know, she, she was trying to say, you know, babe, you need, you need to go ahead and, um, you know, maybe we can alternate every other Sunday. I was like, no. I mean, I'm not ready for that yet because I was just coming into the ministry. So, you know, I think, like you said, sometimes we, have, as men, we have to put our pride to the side yes, and say do. what's best for the ministry because we can mess something up by trying to, you know, say, well, I'm the head, you know, I, I should be the one preaching every Sunday, but you know, no, the, the spirit is not on you like that, you know, and it's okay that she's the face of the ministry. Yes, it's okay. And, and I know one day, of the things. Baba, yes. Go ahead. I said at the end of the day, it's not gender. I'm Amen. being led by Abba. That's right. That's <laughs> he. And so that is that is what is so important for people, for us to pull to change the narrative because it is about God. It's, a, yes, it's about yes. Christ. We are representatives, and He has poured out His Spirit on His sons and his daughters. Now, we need to understand that we do have different assignments. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what is important in this day and time when, when you're talking about uh, fluidity and sexuality and you know openness and all of those things going on even in the church. I think it is important for us to understand our assignments. And so when we work together in ministry, whether whether the the husband is you know a deacon and the and the um, and the wife is a pastor, whatever capacity, but at the end of the day, my husband is the head at home. Amen. Amen. He is the, and and Christ is the head in the church. Amen. We we pastor together. We, you teach we, it. Come on, Pastor. Yes. Come we, on, Pastor Martina. It's very important for us to understand that. So just as my husband said, I, I um, he he had just started ministering, but I said, no, God said, let's do it together. And, and we actually are um, my spiritual uh, mentor 
Bishop Fuller, he said, daughter, I know the hand of God is on you, been on you since you was a child. But in this, there's there's a release of couples. This was in yes. nine, this was in um 2007. And he said, you all can be trailblazers for what's coming because there were not a lot of pastors. Now, even with the pastor and co-pastor, we are not pastor and co-pastor. We started to, and I said, and I said to my husband, this is what the Lord said. And he was a minister of music. We had transitioned out of being ministers of music. <laughs> we were a ministry, a ministry and music team. And so we transitioned from that. And God said, you're not going to, um, going to push another ministry I have ministry in you. And when I heard the Lord say that, I was in um, my prayer room and I ran downstairs and I said, <laughs> Bay, God said, <laughs> we will not, how did he, how did he say it to me? Uh, but basically he said, you know, you're not going to um, push another ministry. I have it in you. And we came together and he submitted to that word because it came from Abba. Amen. 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 And you see, as we as wives, we have influence, but I have to know where to use my influence as a wife. That's with my husband. But as a pastor, as a, a pro prophetically and apostolic anointing, I cannot manipulate my influence as a wife right. to get That's my right. way spiritually. And that takes maturity. Oh, I need you to say that in the back. Put Ooh. people in the back to hear. Women of God, do not manipulate your husbands. And you see that so much in, not necessarily when they're pastoring together, but when the first lady is, isn't is as mature as she can be and uses her womanly influence to manipulate the pastor. And that's that's dangerous ground. Yeah. And, it, and it works and it can work both ways because I've known male pastors who have controlled, um, they have taken the liber the liberty to sort of demote the wife into the sheepfold and mm -hmm. rebuke her openly <laughs> about something that yeah. has to do with the household. House, right. Mm -hmm. And so many times, um, I, first ladies or ladies, you know, they, you know, they say, look, I'm not first, you know, I'm the last. <laughs> so whoever, <laughs> however their title is, many times they are actually rebutting against the treatment because at the end of the day, she's not equal with the sheep. That's mm -hmm. your wife. You know, and right. if she has submitted herself under the ministry, then give her a private uh, rebuke. Um, and just as we would, you know, our sheep, sometimes it has to be an open rebuke, but even with open rebuke, I'd rather it be with the sheep as a whole, not individual, right. because you don't want to break people's spirits and they Amen. turn from God altogether. Amen. Because people are so sensitive these days. Because I remember coming up, um, Bishop Teller told us open rebuke is better than secret love. And yeah. I would be like, could you spread the rebuke around? Because I'm tired of you calling my name over everything. And at the end of the day, he was like, a lot of times, the stuff that he would openly rebuke me for, it wasn't necessarily for me, but he knew that I could handle it. I wouldn't be the one like, oh, I ain't coming to church no more. I'm holding my ties. You know, yeah. I'm leaving, but it what needed to be said needed to be said. And like nowadays, whoo, Jesus, well, the saints will well, pack we, up and leave in a sat, minute. They sat on us. They took their iron and they sharpened us because they yes, knew what did. was on the inside. Yes, of us. yes. yes um, but the Bible says that the, the, the generations would be weaker and wiser. And yes. so they do come. They're more creative. They're more intelligent. But their, their constitution, as the old folks used to say, is not <laughs> like ours. And so that's why God gives us different methods. 
And Amen. we have to be very careful to be open um, as the sons of Issachar to be able to discern the times to yes. be able to hear God on yes. how the method, the message never changes. Change. But never the change. method, the, the method, method, how I draw you, yes. I'm not yes. going to be able to draw you uh, with a rod anymore. But right. you the know, Moses, says. Uh, Joshua, he didn't use a rod. Mm -mm. Y'all understand? Did he use a rod? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, amen. Yeah. So you understand my point that as, yes. as the mantle uh, shifts, it will be another mantle, but it has to be another message. And I think that sometimes we become lazy on what we grew up on and we sort of pass it down and we don't evolve for the generation that we're reaching and then we wonder why you know why? we can't we don't have that impact and reach is that is you that know, understandable oh yes and you know i was just you know explaining to someone else is that you know uh back in the day they had uh rod boards in the churches and that was good. That's all they need with the chaka 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 oh, chaka 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 yeah, 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 washboard. Yeah, washboard. <laughs> we need more than washboard now. You know, we got lights and cameras and things to grab people's attention. You know, because this generation, the attention span is real short. So if you ain't got things going on, catching their eyes, catching their ears, you know, yes. then you, you end up losing them because they, you know, I don't just want to sit here and listen to you talk. Like, what's going on? Like, what's your... What the praise team look like? What the, <laughs> what the dance team look like? You know, and growing up in church, you know, when that when that shift started to happen, you know, it was a lot of people saying, "Oh, y'all doing too much. You don't take all that." Listen, it take all of that and more and more and more, and that's why we're doing what we're doing today because it takes times like these. Cause see, you know, growing up in the church. The only time you would get time to talk to the pastor, pastor wife, both pastors, bishop, pastor, all those things, maybe if there was some type of rap session or something like that. Yeah, or but, you were in trouble. Yeah, or you was in trouble. <laughs> but most of the time, you know, you just come to church, listen to what they got to say, and, you know, keep it moving, you know. Right. And, 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 and you can't get to the bishop. They can catch one of the elders or the deacons or somebody, but to talk to the bishop or the pastor, you know, was something that, you know, wasn't able to happen. But now we have the opportunity and the technology to be able to talk to the people and for them to ask their questions directly, because it's a lot of marriages in the church that are suffering, suffering. because nobody will open up their mouth and say, pastor, bishop, I need some help. Help, right. correct. And this is why we're having this. So there's somebody out there that needs some help. Somebody out there that got a question. Somebody that, you know, got stuff going on that, you know, and it don't have to be your question for the people that's watching. You could be asking a question for somebody else. So your mate don't get thrown off. And then you talking about that's, that's right. Talking that's about. right. Yeah, I ain't talking about you, but it's just, it's things out there that people need to hear from people that have experience that can help them to last, you know, and because- people they, have been miseducated in regards to marriage yeah. in the church. I mean, people yeah. have been taught, I mean, so many people were coupled together just to keep yes. from spinning. Yes. You know, yes. better than married and burn. Yes. In a burn, uh, yeah. All right, you the step is your call now. You can't be around here preaching and going to different churches that don't have, you know, a wife. I mean, it's all kind of stuff that was passed down. Um, right. You know, with uh, women, some women were abused and, and still being abused, but the church said, you don't, we don't believe in divorce. You can't That's right, divorced. you don't leave. Mm -hmm. and, a lot of times with women, you know, we're going to be, we're, we'll do what our pastors say. You know, there's a loyalty in the kingdom of God yes, or is. in the church um, uh -huh. that we came up in. We, yeah. if they said it, we were going to do it. Do even it. at our right. own, even at our own expenses. And so yes. we have to, yes. even as leaders, even as the fivefold, we have a responsibility to teach people to look into the scriptures. Come on in here with us. Yes, look yes, at yes. the scriptures. And as we are rightly dividing, 
the scriptures. As we are distinguishing between what's holy and what's unholy, you can distinguish it too. And I think there's been a lack of respect also because of the hypocrisy. So we're, you know, you come up under a dogmatic mindset or dogmatic <laughs> teaching. And then the next thing you know, the pastor and the white, you know, first lady, they're getting divorced. He has a baby. Mm. They got this, you know, and so people over the years have lost their reverence for the fivefold, for their mm -hmm. pastors, for their leaders. But it's time for us to take the standard back. It back. It's yes, not just it about how anointed and charismatic you are, but where is your integrity? Integrity, yes, yes. Because yes. love is not love until it's tested. I'm right. we I didn't know I, how much I love Bishop Bay until it was <laughs> tested. Do you understand? Faith is not faith <laughs> until it's tested. Amen. You go through something. You that first blissfulness that you have when you first start dating the mm -hmm. season. Yes, mm -hmm. the honeymoon you period. Go through something to know that this is going to be everlasting, like a tree planted by the rivers of water. We shall yes. not be moved. Amen. Amen. We test it, we can't. You won't know that you can survive it. Amen. You hey, want to do the question? Uh, well, it was it was more of a statement from uh, Patricia Gaynor. She said, uh, especially- oh, my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> she said, especially women have been marginalized and held down as a standard for a while. We have women willing to accept anything. Mm -hmm. oh, and, which, and, and she's confirming what you're saying. You know, uh, 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 Pastor, I will, I'll say when, when I first seen my wife, you know, it was in the late 90s. And, you know, I was up in front of the church playing my bass. And, um, you know, this young lady walked inside my church with this big old hat on. You know, I was raised, I was raised Koji. Listen, <laughs> you ain't got to explain to me. I understand you got to cover that head. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, the big hats, I was used to seeing my aunts, you know, the elders and the first lady, yeah. you know, so it's just like, who is this young lady with that big old hat on? And I could see, because I'm all the way in the front. She all the way in the back. But I could see the hat from, from where I was playing my bass at. So I was like, I need oh. to go find out who that is. And then when she walked around for offering, she had her heels on. You know, she was looking all uh, sexy and sanctified. Yeah. And I was just like, all right, Jesus. It turned you know? something on in you. Oh, oh yeah. It's, it made the church boy happy. Um, but and that's that's what I don't mean to cut you off, but that's what I tell people. Like he was such a church boy because most people think that sexiness is being the villain and you know having our stuff showing. But he was attracted to the hat, attracted to the stockings and the the high heels. So, ladies, this is a lesson to let you know you ain't got to look like you going to the nightclub or going to the the club and dressing like a hoochie to attract whom you're supposed to be with. But it it's always the aroma of femininity that attracts a real man. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, you were feminine. You weren't just holy. You, you understand sometimes yes, yes, yes. we were, we grew up in churches, no makeup, you know, um, all some churches all white you know we would go be, we both grew up apostolic so oh so you had church, the jean skirt down to the ground that was dragging well my, <laughs> my church my church was a little progressive even okay. though it was apostolic it was united way of the cross and they had come out of way across and so okay. it was a little bit but we still in the sanctuary yes you had to wear you had to wear a skirt but we still could wear a little lip gloss. We could wear earrings, <laughs> necklaces. You know, we could wear that. But now my husband's ministry, you they couldn't wear, they were stripped all the way down. Listen, they would go to the swimming pool when they, it took years for them to be able to go swimming. But when they came to the pool, they had on a denim, their swimsuits under yeah. their denim skirts and a yeah. t-shirt. It was yeah. like, where y'all going? <laughs> yeah. But that's what I'm doing. with them long skirts on. 
<laughs> Listen, I and then the, and then we wonder why the men would go outside of the church to get to get their wife because listen there is a difference between your spiritual attraction and your physical attraction mm -hmm. and then we are a trifold man you understand it so he's watching <laughs> with his eyes look look at adam it was, <laughs> it was it was that fruit listen, yes I, yes yes he showed them but i <laughs> promise you you understand it was something desirable Amen. Amen. <laughs> Pastor, let me tell you, but she came to the pool. She had on this lace robe and her high heels <laughs> with her calves showing. And I was like, ooh, Jesus. That's my kind of church girl right there. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I, I felt like Ray Charles. I got the right one, baby. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. And yeah. I'm sure, Bishop, I'm sure you could understand by him being a musician. Y'all know we got church groupies. And he had his his groupies that were following, chasing him. And I was like, you know, I enjoy hearing the bass. I like some good music. But I wasn't chasing him. So that made him even more interested. You know, yeah. at the service, I wasn't, you know, at the musician band talking about, can I carry your bass to the car? Boy, bye. Not you, boy, bye. But like um, Sister Patricia said, women are so willing to do anything to get that attention. And that just wasn't me. Yeah, I had to go chase her. I, I had to hurry and put my bass down and run to the back of the church and catch it before she pulled off. So believe me, there was no chasing from this one, you know. And, and that's and, what men like. They they want they want the chase. Um they know, it again. Y'all hear that? Men want to be chased. They don't want mm. But but put the right fruit in front of them though now. You know, I, I keep saying, listen, because a lot of women, a lot of single women are praying for a husband. But you need to put the fruit out there, not in a subliminally sexual uh way, yes. but that they would be able to find you. He that find it. A, a wife, yes. He's gonna find it. If you if you watch any animal shows, I, I love geographic channel animal channel <laughs> but it's the, it is the scent that he attracts Attracted you first. To. Yes. so bath and body works victoria's secret all of those things not so you can be um have a seducing spirit but right, there's right. nothing wrong with your femininity it is supposed to be innately on the inside of us and and uh, women have become so hard and yes, I understand yes. I understand the guard that we've had up because we've had to been be a hundred times uh smarter you know there have been so I know, right? oh go ahead what, what happened no you're your, your daughter, daughter. She, is she said else. they put them women putting out the sour fruit <laughs> Yes, you are the sister she, Patricia, and, and, and you, she's a single pastor, and so okay. she, you know, it comes from a whole different perspective <laughs> when you start pastoring. Yes, um, yes, yes. Uh, and so, but yes, yeah, she's 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 some she's some wonderful. Yeah. Okay, and and when women in ministry, a lot of times because it's so geared towards men, they make you feel like you got to preach it. Preach like a man, you gotta sound like a man, you gotta be hard, even down to our garbs. I remember coming up when I first became a minister and I had to get my my cosset. And I was at the, the teller and I'm like, I'm a girl, since you know how to, everything was just square. I know. I was I, like, I got I got boobies, I need some darts. Yeah. I wanna look like a lady. You That's know? why I had to get mine made. I, <laughs> I'm like, okay. No, we got to do some measurements. Yeah, I got to look like a woman coming. Yes, down. yes, that was my thing. And I remember my the class that was graduating, the minister class that was graduating, it was 13 of us and only two females. And I remember my sister sitting in an audience and she was like, something different about your role. You want to got some alterations done. I was like, yes, because I'm a lady and I'm not, I'm not going to pretend to be a man. I'm not going to act like a man. I'm going to be who God called me to be. And I'm going to do it being ladylike and refined. So yes, I want a waistline. Yes. I'm going to wear high heels. Yes. Yeah. And it but wasn't about it, being materialistic, it, it, but it was letting women know that you don't, ain't no competition in the kingdom and women, we don't have to compete with the men. 
Even Shanene used to say that on Mark. <laughs> I'm a lady. You know what I mean? Just, <laughs> Listen, we're doing to respect you, you know? But it's from a patriarchal, patriarchal yes. um, viewpoint. Alice, even, yes. though, even the word is written from that viewpoint. Yes, or, yes, Or the yes. Bible is written from that viewpoint. And so I don't, I, I believe that women in ministry need to have a midwife. They need yes, to have someone to yeah. train them because absolutely. I don't think necessarily women have tried to sound like men or look like men, but that is who they're, that's who they come from under. That's that's who, because yeah. preaching, the hermeneutics of preaching really comes from, learn. it's a learned behavior. Yes, it if, is. If, if most of the time, if your, your pastor, They're if sure, they yeah. hooped, you're going to hoop. <laughs> you understand? Because that's what you're, that's what's being deposited into right, you. Right, right. And, and, and until you get to that place where you start learning and gleaning outside of your ministry, that's what's being fed to you. And though you have your own anointing and authenticity, what's going to come out of you is what's been poured into you. And so there is a releasing of the midwives to train daughters how to be daughters, but with an anointing that still yes, destroys yes. the yoke and yes, removes yes, the burden. Yes. And that it's not a yes. feminine anointing, but it still has the power God, of the yes. Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is a he. Amen, a amen. <laughs> amen. Amen, amen, amen. He ain't transgender. The Holy Ghost is not transgender. He is a he. I'm a boy, Damien. <laughs> Let me um, go to some of our questions. One of the questions, do you guys, even though we are in still the pandemic, do you guys travel together? When you have to go out of town for conferences or speaking engagements? Can I say this first? Because I think mm -hmm. Bishop had a comment on something we touched on, but I want to make sure he gets the opportunity. No, go ahead. I, uh, I wanted to make reference when we were talking about the things that attracted men to women. Um, and sometimes I think uh, women think that men are one dimensional, um, you know, as far as they concentrate <laughs> on their looks to attract a man. But a lot of times, you know, men as hunters, you know, we, we're not looking just for the looks of it. You know, when I go fishing, I want to get the biggest fish and I want it to give me the biggest fight so I can tell the story of how long it took me to catch it. <laughs> 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 So, you know, Amen. the thing is, the Put thing that attracted to me, uh, attracted me, uh, my wife to me, not only was she fine, but she, she had a, she had a mind, you know what I'm saying? She, she knew how to carry herself. She had, yes. she had great yes. conversation. Yes. Um, yes. She had something to bring to the table. So it's not that we're just looking for something that's, that's flashy, but mm -hmm. it has to have substance along with it also. Substance. So, you know, you know I, I agree with you. Just to add on to right before we go to the questions, um, one of the other things that really like just made me say, yeah, that's my girl. Uh, she she had went with my church, our organization, to our convention, and um, we was in California and we was trying to get back. And the airlines decided they wanted to go on strike the night we were supposed to have been coming back to Philly. So um, you know, we all got scattered all on different flights. And you just don't have me and her was together. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, the people that normally are the leaders that take care of dealing with the stewardess and the flight attendants and the people at the desk, they weren't there. So she said, all right. She grabbed everybody's name. She got a paper. She started writing stuff down. She started going to the desk. She started handling business. And I was sitting back like, I see you, girl. Like, yes. <laughs> And that's the type of woman that my mother was. My mother was a woman of business. My, my mother passed and she was a sister. Some people say just a sister. I'm not gonna say she was just a sister. She was the uh, first assistant and main assistant to my aunt dad and to my bishop. And she took care of everything. Yes. Every single thing that came to ministry. And I didn't realize how important she was to our ministry until she wasn't there no more. And they had to go find somebody else. About three people to replace. To, to take her place. 
all the stuff that she did by herself, it took three people to do it, <laughs> you know? And that just made me look at my wife even that much greater where that was who she was at her church. You know, she was that person when the pastor needed something done, taken care of, Stacy, do this, Stacy, do this. Sometimes I'd be calling and want to talk to her. And she said, I can't talk to you tonight because the pastor got me working. You know, it's, you know, I'm trying to love you down on the phone. I can't work. I don't work. This you got me working, you know. So, you know, that's, that's what you do when you single. The singles are the ones that's that supposed to take I was going to say that. Yep. Because there are a lot of, there are a lot of married um, people who spend too much. Go ahead, say it. Say it. A lot of time <laughs> um, in ministry. Mm -hmm. And the singles, when you serve, God will bless you with everything your hearts desire Amen. when you find yourself serving. Now, I'm not saying that you don't have balance, but when, but a lot of, listen, there are single women right now and men having more sex than married people mm -hmm. because now when you are single that's when you live holy but when you mm -hmm. get married that's when the bed is undefiled come on many, many people are worn out by the time they get married because they have lived do you understand mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. have worn themselves come out on, Pastor. and you they don't it. have anything it's left so they should be turning their backs on each other uh, they're tired they uh, can't be turned on no kind of way because they've been turned out in the world. So much. That's but right. you have to preserve yourself. Yes. Preserve. The preserve. Bed. Preserve, ladies and gentlemen. For your marriage bed. And, yes. and I'll say this for the, um, the, the, the question. Yes, we travel together. Um, so when I go to preach, Bishop is right there with me. Um, he, we don't go, we don't go, you will not find us without one another. Okay. Twice, twice in all 14 years we've been ministering. Um, and I was not able to accompany her when I took off work. So, but other than that, I knew, but who went with her was a mother. That's right. And um, maybe a couple of other people, people that I trusted. Yes. So, okay. Um, you know, she, she's not, no, no, no other man is going to be there carrying her bags and, uh, you know, doing this and that. Uh, you know, for her, um, it's going to be somebody that I trust that goes with her. Yeah, his adjutant. I mean, you got to watch. We just have to be more careful and more discerning. Yes, we Amen. do. I'm yes, your adjutant. Do. He's my <laughs> adjutant. We, we are each other's. And I mean, I'm not saying that they are armor bearers and adjutants aren't um, necessary. It, it It is necessary, but we we are there for one another. We don't do counsel without each other. Mm -hmm. um, you know the, the it, and if it is a uh, male situation uh, where the male feels more comfortable talking about a man issue uh, with Bishop, I am very near. But mo but all of our um, spiritual sons, they feel comfortable. I don't, I had, we haven't had it where we've had to have it separate, but we believe in even in counseling together because if you leave a door open, it may seem like it's something um, small and minute, mm -hmm. but the enemy is looking for a door. Yes, anything. Looking for a door. And so a lot of times mm -hmm. what the enemy will do, he'll play to your vulnerabilities Mm -hmm. um, just say, for instance, if you do spend a lot of time we, in, in, when we first started ministry, now I was all the way in. That was like my baby. You know, <laughs> look, nobody can handle this baby like I can, you know. And so you don't just let anybody hold your newborn. And that's, that's, right. the way, that's the way I was. And I poured a lot of time into it. And I know that my husband was like, now, wait a minute. Ah. Uh, you know, when am I going to get time? But he, he wouldn't say it. And I, in the beginning, I mean, I was totally like, listen, God has called us to do this and we got to do it right. I want to please God. But you have to be, the, the enemy will play on that and try to separate you. But that's why you got to take those moments, those weekly moments or monthly moments and check in. Mm -hmm. Is there something um, that's missing? Is there something I could do better? 
Is it some, you have to ask those questions and you have to be prepared for the honest um, answer that might hurt your feelings, but you need to hear it so that no one else will meet that need. So that no one else will have his emotions or her emotions because emotional affairs are real in this day and time. Yes, yes, it is. yes, yes, yes. And I'm glad you commented on the, the part about the adjutant and assistance do and Bishop said it plainly, ain't no man carrying your bag. And that's <laughs> how, because the church he came from, the men, only the men were speaking and went out on speaking engagement, but they had female assistants. They didn't call them adjutants. They call them Pastor assistants. Aid. Pastor A. Pastor A, yeah, yeah. And from fellowship, the men dealt with the men and the women dealt with the, the women. And so when we came together and we started ministry, I was like, I got you, boo. I'm carrying your bag. I'm in the room to help you change your clothes. You know, yeah. we, we got this and we got five kids. So if I can't come, one of our boys going. And when he can't come, the girls are going with me. And don't get me wrong. We thank God, like you said, for the assistance and people in ministry to help. But you just got to be so careful these days and not to give the appearance of and to watch as well as pray. And it's a um, a sermon that I constantly work on talking about praying and praying. You know how, just like the, the musicians have uh, groupies, there are a lot of women that's attracted to pastors and bishops and stuff just because of your title, really? you know, and they'll nice. pray on you. And just like you have people in a pulpit that were instead of P-R-A-Y, they are P-R-W, praying on the people. So you got to be, you you got to be careful, especially the ones that are too, oh, can y'all see me? It looked like I disappeared. Indeed. That are too anxious, you know, running in and want to get directly close to the pastor, want to be, you know, all up in the a, in a pastor business. Just because you're a <laughs> member of the church doesn't mean I'm going to be your kid's godmother. Just because we go to the same church doesn't mean you can come over my house. Just because we go to the same church don't mean he come into your house to paint your wall. No, we're not doing that. No, you call, yes, you have access to the pastor and the elder, and you can call in the middle of the night, but since you ain't talking to him, you got to talk to me. Bruh, you ain't calling me with, hey, pastor, what's going on? Elder going on, hold on. <laughs> you know, and like you said, those are the conversations that we have to be real, real about and open about with one another. We don't play them games. Hey, the, I mean, the advocate, can, they could be out, out at the door. That's mm -hmm. what they are there mm -hmm. for, to keep people from just barging in, yeah. not yeah. to be in there in that personal space, and unless they're absolutely needed, not saying that that, but it's very important. The lines of demarcation is very important um, because we know that uh, familiarity breeds contentment. Yes, and so it does. if you keep that line there and that respect there, they'll be able to continue to respect you and be able to hear your voice. Yes, when you, yes. When you are um, teaching them, rebuking them, whatever is needed, they'll be able to hear it. But once you, the, I say this often, the sheep do not live with the shepherd. No, they don't. The sheep are in the pasture. The shepherd stays in the house. And so Very when nice. you crossbreed that, like that. You know, that's that. called bestiality. You understand? Like and so mm -hmm. when you start to cross that, it, it does create um, tensions. And especially it can be created in the home when it first started off as something innocent. Now, see, we mm -hmm. started our ministry in our home. And so, you know, for six months, for six months, we were in our home. And so I cook, I cook <laughs> and the people stayed over, you know, and some of them we couldn't get rid of. And I mean, we loved on them and all those things. But at, at there was a point we had to say, hold on. They, they are looking up at us like mom and dad. And we have to be mm -hmm. real. Mm -hmm. People have cursed their parents out. People have had bad relationships with their mama and daddy, yeah. but not in here. Yeah. We're not cussing yeah. pastor out. We're not 
you you got to keep your language respectable but if mm -hmm. you show them a side of you because there are some cursing pastors and apostles and bishops amen we call that the Kurt Franklin spirit <laughs> there are some people that like to fight and they'll beat their members so we have to understand <laughs> i mean we got to i mean people are hurting they've been abused in ministry and yes, yes. and so we have to keep that line not because we think we're better not because you're you're not favored all of us are favored by god um Amen. was there another question no i was just going to add add on to that you know you know when we started ministry and everything you know i was telling my wife you know like how i grew up and what i seen done and she was just like, no, you ain't, ain't going, you ain't going to have no female aides. If you need some help, go get a couple of them young brothers in the church, take them with you, you know, and like one of them is on here now, Anthony Gunter, you know, and you know, pretty much where I go, he go. If I got to go out and preach and she can't, he right there with me. And see, that's somebody she trusts, you know, so she know he going to take care of me. She know he ain't going to allow nobody run up on me, you know, he my bodyguard, he a big man, <laughs> you know, so. He know, the bodyguard, security, the driver. <laughs> the deacon, he, he, he do it all, you know. Yes. He calls me, and you all right? You need anything? Exactly. You know, and he travels from Georgia, and he comes up here to, to take care of us, yes. you know, because of how much he love us <laughs> and how much he love our ministry, you know. So it's necessary to have those people, you know, there, but also have that that distance between the family and the ministry right. because you don't want to get too much too caught personal. up too personal you know yeah. that's when you, in my words of Bertie Mac when you start having some misunderstandings mm -hmm. you know because yeah. people think they got more of a position than what they got a position that's right yeah and we have to keep that um for our son as well um because we <coughs> don't we do not want our son to um, be disgruntled about ministry because of the lack of, because of the attention that was given to members. Um, and so I always tell my son, listen, no matter who calls me mom, I have one son. You are my miracle child and you, you don't <laughs> have to worry about that. And we're not just saying it, we take the time out with him where he his emotional love tank is filled amen and so he does not mind carrying mama's bag carrying daddy or being there carry the amp and do things like that he serves with joy because amen. he understands we know you are our son that means something sonship means something and, and um your daughter spiritual sons and daughters mean something in the spiritual realm but your biological children they are your inheritance yes, they are. Amen. and that's one of the things when apostle you know sent us out to minister and i came home and i we talked to the kids like listen we're about you know to become pastors we're gonna have our own ministries you know how do you guys feel and our younger daughter was like Pop Pop not going, of course at church, she called him Bishop. She like, Pop Pop not going to be there. It's just going to be us at church. We want to, we want to, I want to stay with Pop Pop. <laughs> All right, how she don't want to come with us? But we make sure that we kept that balance. We said that we were going to still allow our children to go to Boy Scouts, play football, cheerlead and basketball. We were not going to be in church Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and not allow them to be children, not yeah. allow them to have extracurricular activities. Balance, balance, yeah, because we, we were those kids that was in church every day, all day long. No balance, we couldn't no play sports and stuff because we had prayer on Tuesday, Bible study on Wednesday, choir rehearsal on Thursday, but um, evangelistical night on Friday or joy night, and then choir rehearsal and and cooking and cleaning chicken and snapping peas on Saturday for Sunday. So it was no time for nothing else. Yeah. We wasn't even allowed to sing on community or neighborhood choirs. Like I wanted to sing on my high school choir. I couldn't, it wasn't no time. You know, the, they had groups out in the neighborhoods. Pastor didn't allow, Bishop didn't allow us to do that. If you sung on a community choir, you can't sing on a church choir. We had about four or five choirs. He was like, it's enough right here. You don't need to go nowhere else. But we didn't want to do that to our children. You know, and I know like as an athlete, 
you know, like my generation at my church was really the first ones that was actually, you know, quote unquote, allowed to yeah. go out, you know, and do extra outside of church, you know, and after a while, they was like, well, y'all ever going to come to church? Because now y'all not never here. <laughs> you know, that's why we didn't want y'all to go to first time, you know? Yeah. So, you know, it was, it was when, you know, they started giving us a little bit more that we actually started to care about church as well. You know, because y'all know growing up in church, you know, some things you do because you told. Mm -hmm. That's right. Not because that's what, you des what your desire is. Yeah, you had to do it. And I, yes, I, right. that, was, that was the um, issue with me when I decided to leave my home church. Um, it's because, you know, I explained it to my father like this. When I was a child, I had to eat what you all prepared. Mm -hmm. um, but when I got older, I was able to eat what I wanted to eat. Wanted to eat. Come on. I needed, I needed um, food for me. What what satisfied my spirit, and so that's why, you know, I had to go. And and they they didn't believe in. Um, unfortunately, they didn't believe in women preachers. And so I knew at the age of 12 that I was called. Um, and so, and and we would go back and forth with oh, one of my Jesus. favorite Dickens in the, sun, <laughs> in the Sunday, um, Sunday school class. We go back and forth. I'm right, I'm, I got my scriptures. I'm like, this is not, I love my ministry. It's anointed, but this is not, this is not in the word. Right. We have, there's been a misinterpretation and there has mm -hmm. not been, a depth of context in yes. regards to the, the scriptures that talk about women not being able to do A, B, and C, but look at the context of it. So anyway, that was what got me to, to move out um, in ministry, but we, we have to be led, you know, by the spirit, but not as a point of rebellion. You know, I want to say that to someone that may be watching. It's not about uh, rebellion, but it is about important. Yes. Yes. Maturity. Yes. And, and Pastor, like, what <clears throat> what drew you to to the bishop? You know, before y'all got married. What drew? Oh, oh my goodness! So, <laughs> so he is younger than me, um, and we we, we are too. <laughs> So he was, I was his um, sister's uh, friend um, and she's older than me. Um, and so he was just, he was in the eighth grade. I was in the 10th grade when we first met and uh, was it or no? Yeah. And then when we got in high school, he was in 10th grade. Back then that was a freshman and I was a senior. So it, it, that wasn't gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> but he he was you know he was very quiet but he was always and when I say always respectful um and so when I went to college I actually brought my boyfriend um to uh meet him because he would be at the church practicing and brought him to the church to meet him but I knew that that boyfriend was not a part of my destiny. I okay. knew that. I, he wanted to marry me, but I knew he was not a part of my destiny. We broke up and then, um, but it was his softness, his kindness. Um, and he was a man. I, you know, he's a man's man, but he <laughs> was heroic. He was a gentleman. He opened the door. He was uh, respectful to my parents. It was all of those things. But most importantly, I grew up in um, uh, domestic violence um, as a child. Um, and both of my parents, they got saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, but that was very traumatic for me. And I decided a long time ago, I, nobody was gonna hurt me. So mm -hmm. I had that guard. Um, he, he knew how to, pull back those layers in such a gentle way and still allow me to be me. He has never been intimidated by my gift. I've been singing publicly since I was nine. He, he knew that about me. He was not intimidated 
by the call of eldership and minister on my life. That is what God knew I needed to have, you know, in not just a boyfriend, but in my husband. I don't know if I answered that, you know. <laughs> it's so much that attracted me, but that, those are the first things that um, stood out to me. But he is a romantic, he's, he's you know, that, that's important for me. Amen. Yes, I think that was a good answer. What you think, Bishop? Good answer. Good answer. Yeah, good answer. <laughs> uh, Bishop Elect Charles Lockett said, "Grace and peace." Oh yeah, Bishop. How but, you doing? Uh, so you want me to answer yes, that as yes, well? Yes. <laughs> like I said, he. Uh, I love football, and he played football in high school. We met when he was in high school. He played football in high school, college, semi-pro. He was a musician, you know, he just had that, that big guy swag, you know, he was Biggie before Biggie came out. No, no, no. Correct. That was my yes. name. He stole my name. He stole my name. Um, and I think I was attracted to him from day one, but because he had so many groupies and stuff, I, I just fell back. And again, uh, like you said, a lot of the things that we were taught the church that we came up in, it was, you know, it's better to marry than to burn. And you really didn't have boyfriend and girlfriends. If you said you like each other, oh, y'all engaged. Like, wait, we don't even know nothing about each there, other. When y'all get married? That was the question. Like, where do y'all get married? You know? <laughs> like, well, I don't even know if he liked the toilet paper over or under. Wait. <laughs> yes. And, um, I think I went away to I went away to college first, and then by the time I came home, he was he was in school. So we would still see each other at conferences and conventions and stuff like that. And after my mother passed away, I moved to North Carolina and he was like, please stay, you know, stay in Philly, stay with me. And I was like, I can't stay as no girlfriend, you know, <laughs> we had to get married. And he wasn't in a position, I wasn't either. I wasn't either, but he'll always tell a story that he wasn't in a position because I am a couple years older than him. and. To God be the glory. Like, as soon as I got out of college, I got a good job. I was rolling in cars. You know, they was like, when are you going to have a baby? Listen, I got pocketbooks and cars to buy. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and then, but when, when it was time, when we got back together uh, in, I think, 2013, we, we were in Baltimore at convention. And his uncle, again, the, uh, the bishop, I had came around for um, offering and I didn't even tell him I was coming because I wasn't sure. And Bishop grabbed my hand and seen that I didn't have a ring on it and looked over at him and was like, man, you better handle your business. <laughs> and that was like that June. And mm -hmm. we started courting each other all over again, like little kids, you know, you go to sleep. No, you go to sleep. What time <laughs> you got to work in them? Call me when you get off work. Call me, you know, during your break time. And we dated for like those six months. And that was like the happiest time of my life. I was like, oh my God, this man makes my heart smile. And we're yin and yang. Like both of us are funny in our in our own right, comic view. But I was just business, 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 you know, and he's fun. <laughs> Got uh, it. Vacation time. And that, that was one of our other questions about how do you, uh, how do you guys handle family vacations because his vacation, his idea of vacation was church convention. If the church didn't go to <laughs> Florida, he would have never been to Disney World. You know what I mean? <laughs> so that was something when we got together, they had to be like, oh, we can't, every conference that, you know, the Reformation has, we can't go to because we're going to use up our two weeks of vacation time mm -hmm. and we ain't going to never have no time. And the kids ain't going, you know, our kids play ball and they go to um, championships and we need say some of them vacation days to go with them. And the church people can't come to the convention. I mean, to the vacation with us. Cause That's right. I don't know about you, I don't know about you guys, but this is Pastor Stacy. When I'm with Biggie, I don't listen to Donnie McClurkin. That's right. You no. Know? <laughs> That's right. We're the, we're the same way. Uh, when, it's, when it's family time, it's family time. And that's one thing that we established a long time ago um, in our ministry. Uh, when we first started the ministry, it was kind of rough because, you know, you, you want to pull all that you can into the ministry. 
financial, mm-hmm. especially when yeah. you're founders. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. 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 Some of yeah. The, um, some of the fellowships that we were a part of, they did want us to take our vacation time around um, when it was time for uh, convention and convocation <laughs> and stuff like that. And we, we said, wait a minute, that doesn't leave you time said, for us. You yes. said, I, said <laughs> I had to come to the conclusion. I said, wait a minute, babe, look, we, we, we're we missing us, down. we're missing us. So, yeah. you know, it's very important. And like you said, when it's time for you to be together, <clears throat> um, like you said, we're not listening to God is a good God and, you know, we're, we're, we're really pouring into each other and loving on each other. And, you know? and creating an atmosphere yes. that, um, that pulls from the fifth, that, that makes you attracted to one another. Like right. I said, some <clears throat> people are, I, I, I'm that type of person that I can be spiritual 24 yes. seven. I can be that way. Um, but I like to have fun. I like to, <laughs> to, I'm very adventurous. I'm cultured. I've been, you know, it, that doesn't take away from that, but I'm very loyal. I've been very loyal to fellowships and, and bishops and things like that. And oh, yeah. that, that yeah. actually at a point, you know, we had a spiritual leader who, um, insinuated how much further I could be. Um, with my anointing. And Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, I had to make a decision. Even though we were together, we were together in that uh, fellowship. Um, My husband discerned that and he said, you can stay, but I I'm gonna have to, you know. I see what's going on, and I love. It wasn't. It it wasn't that we loved them. It wasn't (laughs) that we didn't love them, but we chose our marriage over platform. Um, Pastor, thank you, thank you, (laughs) thank you. And and, and see, for me, for me, you know, when me and my wife got back together, you know, and I proposed, and my father was like. Uh, when you bringing her down, son, and I'm like, uh, I'm not bringing her down, you know. He he, he cussed me out, you know. <laughs> Where the cause you going? You know. And I'm like, I'm like Bishop. I said you 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 got to understand. Um, I'm not saying I'm not necessary here, but where I'm at in my church and where she's at in her church is two different places. I take her away from her church, ain't no telling what's going to happen. Right. He leave from here, y'all going to still roll on. It's enough <laughs> young brothers in this church. We're just going to keep rolling. You know, the ball won't drop. But I know where her necessity was in her church. Because I was the assistant pastor um, when we were in Statesville. We was located in Statesville at the time. You know, so it was just like, I, I got to do what's best for my family. Yeah. Right. And, and what's that's best. what, that's what being a man is. You exactly. were being responsible, that you were being responsible. And sometimes they'll try to switch it. Like yeah, yeah. you're henpecked or whatever they uh-huh. want to call it. But no, no, you're being responsible because yes. at the end of the day, as, as I often say, my husband is the tiebreaker. So <laughs> I like that. Even in ministry, even when, when, um, he says, and he would say to people all the time, my wife is the face of the ministry. If we if we go places, they'll recognize her. He did not have a problem with that, you know? And so um, you just have to learn. He was secure. And I, can't, I cannot express that enough. He was secure in his manhood. And I made sure that he knew he was the head. You understand? Not, and I didn't have to tell nobody he was. And that that is really because a lot of times if you have to say he's the head, he's not. Right, right. You're right. controlling that. But I didn't have to say that he was secure in that. And that, and he said to the people, I don't feel less than if you don't think of me as the, the lead pastor, even though we didn't have lead pastors. It's just pastors, uh Santonia and Martina at that time. You know, he said, I don't care about that. We, I know, I'm secure enough to know. So as, um, and and as Bishop, he understands his assignment 
is um, administration. And I think people really misunderstand titles. The they do. office of a bishop they has do. nothing to do with preaching. It has That's something right. to do with structure. And so people really get off on <laughs> titles and um, headship and mm -hmm. when your man go, when he going to be the, when he going to come out front, when he <laughs> going, there are people that won't follow because, you know, women are with the, in the past, but it's, you know, it's, it's slowly turning now. It's turning faster in the world than it is in the church world, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is, it is. But, it, it is. but it's happening nonetheless. And I'm the, I'm the opposite. I think I might be more like Bishop where right in the, currently I'm pastor and he's an elder. But when we go out, you know, people always, hey, Bishop, where the first lady at? Hey, first lady, Stacy. And I never correct anybody because I'm not, hung up on title. I know who I am and he know who he you is. You good, you good, babe. Don't call me first lady. Yes. <laughs> I, but I understand what you're saying. But I, I think my mom is a um, civil civil rights activist. Okay. So strong, we are strong female, um, alpha females. Um, and so <laughs> it's, not, it's not that, it, it, that's not the point. It's the point of I've been in ministry long enough to know when someone wants to diminish you. Mm -hmm, so that mm -hmm. that is why. Um, but a lot of times he'll say he'll come behind that response and he'll say, "Well, you know, Pastor Martina, blah blah so. blah." And so yeah. I had to learn to let him do that. But I don't I don't do it all the time. But I am better than I was. <laughs> I, I am better than I was because you have to be a careful of the assuming. People have to be careful of assuming. No, and some of them don't assume. They know. know and they do it intentionally. Like you said, some people they yeah. know and they do it intentionally. And he'll be the one to come back and correct. You know, I'm like, babe, it's fine. It's you know, you look like a bishop. This it's fine. They ain't got to call me nothing. My mama named me Stacy, but he'll come back <laughs> and make the yes, correction. Yes. You know, I agree real. with you, but that respect, I, I'm a, it, it, I don't know. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> my crib tonight. It's on my, my name crib. now. <laughs> it, don't, it, it don't take much for the beast to come out. And, 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 and the beast to come out, you disrespect my wife. You know what I mean? Ooh, there it is. Don't disrespect my wife, you know, because this is the woman that God has put in my life to protect me and to cover me. This is the woman that when my family met other things that I brought around, they didn't really care for them, but everybody <laughs> loves oh. Stacy. Everybody loves Stacy, from the baby <laughs> to the oldest. I mean, yes. I got two little nephews now. When she come around, they start blushing. And I'll be like, hold up now. I My boy, hey, bro, this is your auntie right here. They just start smiling at her. They like, little, they like five and seven. They little, but they my babies. They start, they start getting all happy and I'm like, calm down, calm down. But I understand she's beautiful, both on the inside and out and, yeah. and out. I love this woman, you know, and you know, I will hurt somebody over her. I will, you know, I won't hurt her. She's too soft and telling me, but I will hurt somebody else, you know, that don't honor and respect her in the position that she's given. And, and simply because, you know, she my wife and she a woman. And I know how this world acts sometimes when it comes to women in leadership. That's right. You know, they don't honor them, they don't respect them in the way that's due. And the greatest thing we got to all remember as saints of the most high God is that when Jesus came down off the cross, mm -hmm. the first person that was there waiting Who was, on there? was a woman. I want the, woman. the men were somewhere hiding because they were scared of <laughs> yeah. what was getting ready to happen. Right. But the woman said, I ain't going to worry about what's happening. You That's know, I'm right. trusting. And if it wasn't for the women, where would we be? I'm telling you. That's why I, I beg her sometimes. She like somebody got said, I need you with me while I'm traveling to protect me from all of you know the, the stuff. Other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Yeah. You know, because you, Bishop, you know how it is. Oh, I yes, love yes. you, Bishop. I enjoyed your word. Right. You know, what's your what's your Instagram name? What's your Facebook <laughs> name? No, no. My wife right there, you, baby. You know, go go on alone. And that's what we as men have to be careful and conscious of. Right. That's right. You know, one, making sure we respect our women fully. And that two, that we make sure that we don't allow nothing and nobody. A lot of marriages fall apart, Bishop, and I know you probably done seen it, social media, just like me, because the men allow themselves to get distracted. That's right. That's right. You're right. And I don't want to be one of them dudes <clears throat> that uh, Larry Reed going to talk about. That's right. <laughs> exactly. But that's why we have to make sure that uh, the balance is there. Because the thing is, um, a lot of times people want to bring the church into the house, but there has to be a line of demarcation there because in the house is, is uh, baby and bae. It's not pastor and bishop, mm -hmm. even though we know who we are. But the same thing is, you know, we have to make sure that we are catering to those needs from the household um, because God is going to take care of the spirit. And mm -hmm. we have to trust him enough to know that he's going to take care of the spiritual matters. We, we feel like we have to fix everything. But God said, no, this, this is mine. The church belongs to him. And that's one thing that we had to realize because uh, the church is his wife. Mm -hmm. He's going to take care of the church. It yes. is our duty to take care of the home and our yes. wives and to make yes. sure that their needs are met and, and vice versa but to make sure that his needs are met. <laughs> so my wife, she does an excellent job with making sure that my needs are met. As she said, we, we have those conversations. Uh, babe, you need anything? Um, do we need to talk about anything? How are you emotionally? You know, those things are very important. And, and the thing is, we have to realize that people evolve. And sometimes we expect people to be the same as they were when we first married them. But some of the things that I like when we first got married, you know, I, I like other things now. And she and she has uh, recognized that. And she said, oh, I remember you used to like that, but now you switched up. Okay, let me help you in that area. And she don't get mad because I changed my mind about something that I, that I used to like. You know, you, you have to make sure that you are rolling with the, uh, rolling with the punches, so to say. Yeah. Pastor Martina, listen, I, I love my man and I love money. I had an issue with him wanting me, I felt like he wanted me to be his mama when he would want me to wash the clothes, cook the food, clean the house, you know, do everything. And not that I couldn't do it because I was, we were grown when we got married. Yeah. But listen, honey, when he started bringing them checks home, it was like, here, babe, just give me a couple of dollars for gas and a haircut, and you handle the rest. You want me to iron your shirt? You want me to pack your lunch? Well, that's the reality. There, there are a lot of men that they want No more that. problems. Yeah, there are a lot of husbands that want that, but they're not doing that. Yeah. If, if that's not how your household operates, then the chores have to be shared. If you mm -hmm. all are both working secular jobs, it has to be shared. Who has the strength? Who cooks well? That's who cooks. Who cleans mm -hmm. well? That's who cleans or who, I mean, things shift for different households. If your household operates a certain way, that's wonderful. But I, uh, again, I go back to a lot of our trainings in church was simply we saw an example and sometimes those examples were not even true but they told us this is what a wife is supposed to do this is what how she's supposed to dress how she's supposed to do this and this is what a man is supposed to do and oftentimes you know you would find women working full-time jobs coming home and cooking taking care of the kids washing clothes and the man if he did work he had one job and he came and just sat and watched TV. So right, and didn't want to be lovey-dovey and you tired. <laughs> correct. And if, <laughs> if you share it, if you share it, then it it creates a balance and, and nobody's overworked, nobody's mm -hmm. burned out, everybody's needs are met. But that is a symphony that happens. When you understand rest, when you understand that this, this is your resting time right here. This is when your part comes in. This is when your part come in. And we are jointly fit together, but we have to yes. understand for your household, 
And I think a lot of times we go off of other people's household, but you got to do That's what it. your household yes. is good for your household because you may start off where you work. Then you are housewife. Maybe you, mm -hmm. you know, or it may be vice versa. People go through, people get laid off. And now, you know, the wife has to be the one, she's the breadwinner or vice versa. So you got to know how to roll with those punches and yes. not say, oh no, you've changed. Well, no, our, our assignments have changed. Our roles have changed, but I'm going to still respect you because at the end of the day, um, Ephesians says, um, and it's Ephesians uh, 4 and 21 or 5 and 21 that we are to submit or 5 and 22, 4 and 22, we are to submit one to another. But when that script, when that chapter starts, it says, men, husbands, love your wives. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. And uh, wives, respect, respect. your husbands. So yeah, respect. men want respect. Women want love. When you understand that, it'll be a type of, of connection because we have emo we we are emotional, we're I need to take that. sensitive to that. But men, if you respect them, they can lose their love for you if you disrespect, disrespect. them. But we want that love. Women will stay when they're disrespected if they think they're loved. That's why some uh, yes. women say, well, he loved me. He hit me, but he <laughs> loved me because emotionally they are tied to him. But again, men, they want that respect. And that is, it's not that now I teach my daughters now you need respect too, but we <laughs> see it in the scripture. Husbands love your wife. We That's see right. in the scripture, wives respect your husband. You got and to respect them. and you got to protect them because we're the real. And, and that's 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 what you saying, Pastor, is, is on point. And you know, I'm I'm hoping that uh whether they're single or married, the women that's listening can have a better understanding on those things. Because like in, in my house, you know. I asked her to cook because I know that's not my job. Like that's right. That's that's not my lane. You know, I mean, I can make some breakfast, but that's <laughs> that's where it stops. But you know, I especially now that it's warming up, I pull up my grill and start cooking and be doing that all day long. So you know, it's about it's about staying in your lane and evolving. And, and like when stuff go wrong in this house, that's my job is to get it fixed. Whether it's cars, whether it's the plumbing, electricity, you know, whatever it is, it's my job to get it fixed. I better have the money. I better have the time. But it's my job to, to get it done, you know? So, you know, and, and, and some days I'll call home, coming from work, and I'll be like, what are we eating tonight? She's like, you got to go for yourself. And I'll be like, it's all good. I go grab me a sandwich. I go to Selways, you know, get something, you know, hopefully that's, you know, a little healthy sometimes, <laughs> you know, you know, and then sometimes if she sounds just tired, I go grab something for both of us, you know, like whatever it takes to make it work. Like she know, I, I ain't hard to please, you know, yeah. like as long as she's scratching my back, rubbing my head. You can tell the secrets, don't tell the secrets. <laughs> <laughs> I want the women that's watching to know, listen, some men, all we want is for you just to rub our back and scratch yeah. our head. And we'll fall asleep and we'll be right out of your way real fast. You know, yes. it, you know, it's it, it just it's the little things. Yeah, you really have to know one each one another's love language. Yes. You got to be on the same page because my my what's gonna um meet my needs and make me happy may not be yours. But that does not mean we have to be at conflict with each other. Oh, you just want too much, or you just gotta have it this way. Oh, you bougie. Oh, you, you know, we go, people go back and forth, like, hold up, wait a minute. You are um, the glory of your husband, and your husband, it, it's vice versa. So, in order to be happy, find out what makes him happy and do that. Even if you don't like it, you do that. He finds out what makes you happy, even if he don't like it. Do that. And guess what? Yeah. If you are doing what makes each other happy, you're going to be happy. Oh, that's not, go, those nuggets right there. Not trying to make somebody yes. force them to like it your way 
and be happy. And too many wives have played the game that they were happy and satisfied and were not. Mm-hmm. This ain't Burger King. You can't have it your way. You know, you got to, you, you got to know how not, to give it. Not forever. At some point, the uh, the uh, newness of it is going to wear off. That's why I tell, if you're single, I tell you, you need to date at least six months because you got mm-hmm. six to, uh, months to, a, well, I say six months because it takes six months to see the real person. Right, right, right. Not easy for giving. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, Anthony Gunter said a cheerful giver. You know, <laughs> like, you got to do what you do for your mate with joy. Mm-hmm. You know, because, listen, it, some things that I had to do when I was younger with my parents, or even in church, I didn't do it. But I did it because it was the right thing to do. You know, everything that, that you got to do ain't always what you want to do. But if it's yes. the right thing to do, if it's going to make it work, if it's going to make it last, then you do what you got to do. Because when you love someone, you will sacrifice for them. Yeah. You will go above and beyond. You will do whatever it takes to make it work. That's right. But my joy is seeing him happy. Me Amen. Too. Amen. Yep. That's my Amen. joy. And yeah. vice versa. And yeah. when you start at home, it will not be hard to do it in the street. It will not hard right. be hard to live it in the pulpit when you get to church. Some couples can't even talk to each other on the way to church because they could <laughs> uh, accidentally get in an argument and we just want to keep it holy. We just want to keep it whatever. No, me and Bay, we talking all the way. We we probably talk more in the car than we do at home. <laughs> but And I'm not saying people are different. I'm just saying the, the, the boundaries that we put on marriage when marriage is supposed to be the most free freest relationship yes. that God created is marriage. Amen. 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 So, so right. I, I, I got a question, uh, Pastor and Bishop. Um, if if, if a, a man, woman, or even them as a couple come to you guys and say, uh, my wife not taking care of me the way she, she should, or my husband not taking care of me the way that he should. And I'm talking about behind the bedroom door. What do you say? You can say sex. Okay. (laughs) Church people had sex. (laughs) Well, so you want me to answer what? (laughs) (laughs) Well, we've actually had some counseling sessions with people who have come to us and, and not necessarily people that were in our ministry. Some people um, that, you know, that trusted our uh, ministry and, and our council actually came uh, to speak about that. And, I mean, we just have to give them sound advice, um, you know, because it's a real issue that people uh, lose, lose intimacy um, or they forget how to be intimacy, but how to be intimate because of life. You know, as, as we were talking about, sometimes people can get so caught up in their jobs, um, in their extracurricular activities, or even church. Mm-hmm. Um, that they lose that um, desire to be with their spouse. And some some women um, were not, we, we're taught to be so chaste until um, I had to teach, you know, some of my um, young women who, who were um, virgins or didn't have a <laughs> lot of experience sexually, I had to I had to have a little side meeting. Give them, <laughs> I had to, you know, give them little books and pointers on, you know, what to do and things like that. Um, not graphic, not anything graphic, but things right. like, you know, really just saying you are free. So whatever those, um, you know, they would t- teach you such and such is nasty. That's nasty. Everything sexual is nasty. What is what's going on here? <laughs> That's the way some people were taught, though. You know, they were taught. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we you don't know. do that. Mm-mm. We can't do that. Mm-mm. Just right. missionary style. I'm like, yeah. honey. And that's it. <laughs> All your clothes on. Can't take a. He don't. He ain't never seen me na- uh, naked. I mean, this is. They wear it like it's a badge in holiness. They wear it like a badge. You have to be retaught. 
sex, your sensual part, your feminine part, your yes. how to flirt. You need to know how to flirt with your husband. You need to know how to tease. You know how to pull them in, back them up. Did all, you? I mean, it. And sometimes, like I said, it has to be taught. But but when it comes to when people come to you about those things, we have to dig into the motive because we we did have a couple. I mean, I think their motive. Um, sometimes people can come to you to see what where you at, mm-hmm. where you are, and try so to you pull you to check, You have to check yes. their motive, but we just turn it back around because, um, you know, you need to find out what each other likes, what you like, and cut um, these other cords because most of the time when people have lost attraction. Or, or lost their uh, passion for their spouse, there is something, there's someone else um, taking up their time, whether it's at mm-hmm. work, you know, mm-hmm. at work, I'm not standing around the microwave talking to no other guys um, unless I'm ministering. Right. I mean, it, at work, they know, even though some of them don't even know I'm a pastor, but by the time I get through with them, they <laughs> You understand because that's the yeah. only way. That's the only thing we're talking about. Even if right. they, even if they're upset about something that happened at work, even if uh, the manager gets on them, does that, this, that, and the other. I'm turning it back to the scripture. You need to do your work as unto the Lord, diligent. I'm turning. It's going to be a scripture ministry opportunity. But when you open up that door, and even just like you said, those conversations when people, you know, call, oh, doc, oh, this, you know, they not, you know, they don't do that to us. But I'm saying I've heard this, <laughs> but, you know, pastor, she just won't do this. She just won't do that. Well, listen, you got to find out what what uh, brings the juice, honey. That's that right. Is, <laughs> that's, that's right. Juice. That's right. That's a pastor? part of the joy. It's finding um, the scripture says in Proverbs that a man is like a spring or fountain. Um, a woman is like a well. So with a man, you just touch him. He might spring forth. With a woman, she's a well. So you've got a W-E-L-L. You've got to take time from head to toe. Yes, to yes. cause her to loosen, especially if she's been in church. Because she's not just going to all of a sudden, just all, you just right there. And right. people are using all of this stuff to, to try to bring it into the bedroom without first. Now, if there's something medically wrong, then we need to deal with that. But you must first make the attempt to, to learn each other's body and you and pay attention, men. If you know, if you hear a certain sound, just stay right there. Don't move. Stay right there. You might don't, teach mother. Don't move to what you want to move to. You might be a breast person, but if, if she a back person, stay at the back where you hear her, where you hear it or sound. The same thing for him. You may be a foot person, you know, so you you make sure you hit his feet. You y'all <laughs> understand what I'm saying, but don't yes, try to, yes. don't try to move quickly to the place. That's going to please you. Nobody's going to be pleased. Well, one person may be pleased. But <laughs> no. If you want a, a successful marriage, if you want everybody happy and keep other people out of your marriage. Oh, you that part right there. That part right there. That's that the part right there. Look at it as an adventure to explore. You understand no, that of contention. I- I know we've been on here. <laughs> All right. Let me, Um, I want to go over some of the comments. I okay. wish you guys uh, seen this. Let's see. Um, I wish Tam, Tam said, that's good right there. Uh, Teresa, I guess that's it's car. Mom, I can't see the rest Elder of you. Carter. Okay. Is Teresa says, <laughs> sacrifice is a four letter <laughs> word in this world now. Anthony Ooh. said, big facts. Like Terry Moss. Say yes, education is key. She also said yes, we are free in holiness over here. <laughs> Listen, you should be free. Walk around. Sometimes do something with your spouse you've never done before. Walk around naked in front of you. I don't know what it is for you. Or his, his, his thing is high heels. His thing is high heels, and I Listen. love dressing up. I love high heels and makeup. 
But if I know I want us to have a good night, if I put on some high heels in his bedtime, Doc already know. He'd be like, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Listen, my husband had to tell my son, if that door is locked, don't knock. <laughs> You hear me? We don't want to hurt it. your feelings. But you're gonna I know that's right. You get your feelings right. hurt tonight, son. You hear me? My, kid, my kids know when they hear the music playing on the TV. Listen, just go on and put some headphones on, baby. When I turn the iHeartRadio on and you know, turn off the lights, turn them on. Leave us alone. Leave us alone. You know, and I'm telling the men that's 40 years and older, that is okay if male intimate, uh, what they call it? Male uh Epitaph. Yeah. yeah. If it's happening to you, go and get you some Viagra. Yeah. Go get you some pills. Go get you some help. You still want to please your woman. Amen. Don't allow your age to stop you from getting the job done. And don't act like you're doing something when you're not. <laughs> <laughs> The devil is a liar. Let's let's be honest. Wait a minute, we can't hear you, Bishop. I don't know what it is about black men, but we hate going to the doctor. Um, yes. You know, so, well, I, of course, a lot of times insurance is the issue for a lot of people, but you know, when it comes to having to pay you know, those co-pays and stuff like that, we we think our money can be better spent other places. But your health is the main priority, and yes, you know, yes. if you are having those. Um, uh, you know, this, this dysfunctions, um, you know, you need to, you know, seek advice as far as what you can do, because it could be something more serious you right. know, um, that you that needs attention as well. Correct. So, you know, with uh, diabetes and high blood pressure, um, sometimes we just let it go and let it go until, you know, it's at a point where, you know, it's, it's hard to even come back from it because you've let it go for so long. And a lot um, of men will actually blame their wives. Like, you know, it's their yeah, fault yeah, and they end yeah. up going, you know, somewhere else. But I mean, we have to be honest with each other, but you, yes, yes we do. get, get yes, all we the do. help that you need. Uh, we, we begin to change our help. You know, this is one of our testimonies. Um, as we had, when we got 40, I mean, things just, I've always been a energetic person, but I was always full figure. But when I tell you, I could had all the energy in the world. We hit 40, something, something shifted. My mama said, when you get 40, you're going to need glasses. <laughs> I was 39. I, could, I had 20, 20 vision. I said, mom, I'm going to be all right. 40 and, and one day I need it. Listen, I need those glasses. You better yes. listen to your midwives. And, and it's important for the older women to teach the younger women and the older men to teach the younger men and a lot of times yes, yes. a lot of times they're not being the men are not being um honest, honest. with the younger men and and vice versa with the women they're not being honest and telling the truth and i believe this generation respects transparency absolutely absolutely one of our deacons said two bananas a day fellas and you'll thank me later <laughs> Um, Terry Moss again said, change your diet and drink a lot of water. Yes. Teresa Carter said, no acting. AJ said, bump them kids. <laughs> again, this is a conversation that we need to have, you know, yeah. the, because we know church people are having sex or the lack thereof. And if you're not honest with one another, you're not going to know what one another like, like. I don't know. Maybe the doily may turn somebody on, but somebody else might not like the doily. Mm. You know, I want some lace, but I don't want it on their head. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen. And I mean, a lot of times it's a mentality. It's not even that they like that. It has been harshly put in. Um, I think uh, Bishop Carton Pearson he talked about this. He said when they were coming up, they they made you think that women were the devil don't you don't you uh, go near that woman no don't you do this and so when he got married he you know it's almost like you're afraid to be intimate other than what the bishops told you you could do in your <laughs> bedroom Lord, that some Lord. people were they would not come together unless the bishop told them this is your night to come together i mean Jesus. this is some real stuff that the That's church great. 
cross the line and you are supposed to, sh- Jesus says, if you love me, feed yes. my sheep. Feed my sheep. Not, not tell them what they, I'm not here to police you. Mm-hmm. I'm here to give you the word of the Lord and it's yes. up to you whether yes. you obey it. Yes. I'm not following yes. you home, but don't be telling me what pastor I failed last night. Well, baby, you better get to the altar. I can help you, you know, pray uh-huh. through and I can give you the principles of the standards to live and walk up right before the Lord. But baby, it's on you to obey the Holy Spirit. Don't come yes. to me every Sunday telling me <laughs> your uh, proclivities. You listen to the word. The word is a seed. And before you know it, you will be out of what you need to be delivered from. But I'm not your deliverer. That's right. That's right. The pastor and the deacon shouldn't have to sit outside your house to make sure you're living right. The Holy Spirit makes you live right. And unfortunately, the church of old, that's what they used to do. You know? Yeah. People, that's what people want to go to tell educated. folks to the bishop. Bishop, I saw uh, I saw Brother Johnson sneaking out at two o'clock in the morning. What are you doing out two o'clock in the morning? Did you see them doing it? You know, like how about you deal with your soul salvation and allow God to do it? But unfortunately, you know, we grew up in a time of 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 control. You know, yes. we, we grew up, you know, in back in the you know late seventies, eighties, nineties. It was about controlling the people and. Some in leadership felt like if they controlled the people, then they could, you know, watch what they do and where they say. But you, you know, think about it. One of my cousins told me something the other day. He said, he said, the thrill is sneaking. Right. Oh, sneaking to do stuff? Sneaking to do stuff is the thrill. And, and, and that's how a lot of church people was. I know how it was where I was from growing up. <laughs> it was the thrill of sneaking because... Because you you were so controlled, as you were saying, and it's so deep. You know, uh, uh, I know some married people that was in my church and other churches who, you know, it was just like, you couldn't tell they was married. Right. You know, I'd be in their house and they'd be like, hey, Deacon, Vance is such and such. And I'm like, you don't know what her first name is? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what his first name is? Like, y'all still digging an evangelist at the house? Like, exactly. why can't you be, you know, Harry and Stacy at home as well? You yeah. know, not, you know, and that's the separation of God, family, church. Right. Exactly. And I believe that's where the church of old lost its way because it was God, church, Family, mm-hmm. and that's why you see so many families Messed fall up. apart. So many divorces fall apart because folks is worrying more about the church and ministry starts at home. Yeah, yes. Right. You and can't miss it, and that's no why we're here. That's why we're here to make marriage attractive. Amen. I want you. I I need you to understand. I want you to want this. Amen. That's right. You're not gonna get this outside of marriage. You're not gonna get this one accord this. You're not gonna get the threefold cord without being married and having God wrapped around it. And I want it to be so attractive to you, to you go, man, you go and find your wife, you get back with your wife, become romantic, find each other's love language, do whatever you have to do, go wherever you have to go and you have to also Again, go, going back to children, because I know as a, a mom of one child who I was not supposed to have, my heart, you know, my, my son, I, I can hear him moving. Before he calls my name, I say, Prince, did you call me? He said, no, mommy, I'm, I was getting ready to, though. I was getting, so that's how, but sometimes you can allow your children to come into your, um, your time your time of romance, your time of togetherness. That's why one of our sons calling now, he had a football game. Go ahead, go get him. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But the intimacy, so sometimes you have to let the children stay with grandmother, let the children, you know, someone you trust or whatever and get away. It's not just that time in your home, but uh, make it 
spice it up you know even mm -hmm. if you do you know they call it staycations go to a beautiful um hotel spend some time away together even if it's one night even if it's two nights um as pastors you know we are often travel you know on a monday and we'll come back on a saturday if we do a week um uh, because we just believe in being in church but, one more we, sunday. but, but now but now if you have um a strong leadership, use them. Don't have prophets and elders and things in the church that you don't, if you have got, if you don't trust them, that they are gonna take your church members away and they are gonna start their own church, then you need to reconnect with the Holy Spirit. Cause God, if God has called you, he will always have a people for you. Amen. And the world is too large for you to try to hold on to 30 people. <laughs> Joyce Jenkins said, uh, say it again, ministry starts at home. And Hi, that's Terry Moss said again, how can we get more of this type of teaching for couples on a regular basis? Well, um, Terry, this is, this, is, this is why we're doing this discussion. This is our second time. Uh, having this discussion and Pastor and Bishop do it because I was watching every one of Thursday. your uh, every Thursday. Thursday, every Thursday, we do the live discussion podcast every other week with different topics. But Pastor and Bishop, Bishop and Pastor mm -hmm. Echoes, right? They do it every Thursday. If you can't put your information on the screen and we'll share it to everybody that's watching, um, on Facebook so that they, if you need and you want to hear. Marriage and ministry from somebody that's spiritually led and educated and fortified, then you could jump on their jump on their Facebook Live every Thursday evening because this this is needed. We need to know that we have to love one another. We need to know that ministry starts at home. We need to know our love language. We need to take away, I mean, take care of our children. <coughs> You know, and yes. you can have it both. You can you have can a have successful marriage. You yes, can have you it can. all, but it will take sacrifice. And uh, your all, yes. your all will have to, you will have to change your definition of what having it all is. And that's where the kingdom principles come in because the world says you can have it all, but there may be a different definition for that. But we are there to give the biblical foundation for you to build a happy marriage, a happy home, successful marriage. And that does not mm -hmm. mean that you're gonna be happy all the time. That's but you right. have That's joy. Right. Joy is That's different right. from happy. I promise right. you joy, unspeakable joy, but happiness is based on what happens. But you That's can right. make it through the storms of life if you do it together. When you go through something financial, you don't turn your back on each other. You That's don't right. try, you know, sometimes the man, he'll try to solve it on his own. He doesn't want the wife to know, you know, or the wife, she doesn't want to, him to know. He, She doesn't want him to have the pressure of the children or A, B, and C. But listen, you've got to come together and yes, talk about together. what is yes, going yes. on. Because again, you will create a gap for someone mm -hmm. else to come in and provide a solution that only your Adam is supposed to have. And one of my, Ooh. one of my ministry, um sayings is um is bay the acronym for bay for me is being adam's eve I, okay i like that I am, <laughs> i'm his eve um when i'm not a pastor when i'm not you do you understand what i say? i am his rib i protect the vital organs his heart his lungs he won't be punctured because i'm there to protect but it's hard to protect what we're not, uh, when we're not vulnerable with each other. That's right, and, that's right. You know, Pastor, uh, me and my wife have said to each other since um, we uh, got married is that our marriage is bigger than us. Yes. We, we, we our marriage is bigger than Harry, is bigger than Stacy. You know, our marriage, we want our marriage to be an example before men and women. Yes. As the Bible says, to let your light so shine before men and women. Well, I want our marriage to shine before yes. men and women. 
I want us to be the type of people that when other folks is having problems, they yes. know they got somebody to talk to that can lead and direct them into a way that can be successful. Because it's not going to take advantage of It's not going right, to take advantage. Right. Pastor, because it ain't always meant peaches and herb between me and my wife. We That's went right. through our rough patch. I would say halfway from the beginning of our marriage, we went through our rough patch when she was like, you know, I don't want you. And I was just like, I don't care. I don't care what you saying. I ain't leave Philly not to stay. Like, we're we going to find that. a way to work this out. We're so you might as well get yourself ready and, and get your mind right. Because God did not bring us together. What God joins together, let no man or one man put asunder. Yeah. That can't just be something that sounds good on your wedding day. <laughs> that has to be a dedicated thought that you have to hold within your heart yes. from the beginning till the end. Yes. And when is the end? Whether we go out together <laughs> or we go out alone, it's till the end. It's till death do us part. You it's know, till and the rapture. It's till the Lord comes back. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and that's one thing I appreciate. I appreciate. I tell him all the time. He get mad cool points for putting up with me because sometimes I can get on my own nerve. And it has been occasions where I'll be like, just get out the bed, go sleep on the couch, go sleep in one of the other rooms. And you're like, no, you're going to be mad. You mad Do you go somewhere, but I'm staying right here. And I'll be like, for real? You really not going to get out? I ain't going nowhere. And I'm glad that he didn't. And that leads me to our, our, our last question. And I'm telling you guys, if you go back and look, Facebook is blowing up. But this leads to our last our last question. Terry said, thank you all for your example because it's rare to see this level of transparency and authenticity. Um, Moss, they have a Moss mail on Monday nights, but she said sometimes they get raw, but they need to hear the spiritual aspect of this. And the, the last question is, who do you go to to vent or to talk to in ministry as a couple, because when I ask my husband to get out the bed and and I need him, I need to have some space. That's because an overseer told me that she was like, "You know what? You need to send him home for a little." while. You know, I, I I went to her venting because things wasn't going my way. My husband and I did not live together before we got married. We did not have sex before we got married. So we still, even though we were grown, it was still a lot of stuff we had to learn about each other. And I, being transparent, Terry, by me being grown and having my own house, my own car and my own yeah. money, I wanted to be submissive. I wanted him to be in charge. That's what I was saying with my mouth. But then when he would say, hey, we gotta do this and that. Well, who money? That's my money. I ain't gotta tell you. He and And, I remember one of the biggest things, I think our very first argument was we were getting a new washer and dryer and I ordered this stuff and he said he didn't want no men in the house when he wasn't here. That's how he was raised. That's how they did it. I've been living on my own, you know, for some years. So I bought a washer and dryer before. I don't need you to be here for the man uh, to come in. And I mean, and he was livid and I couldn't understand why he was mad. Like that's one less thing that you have to do. But if he say, I don't want a man in here when I'm not here, not that he thought it was going to be hanky panky going on, but he just didn't want that. But I didn't understand it. So when I went, you know, to to this, she's married and, and, and I thought that I could event and, and would get sound advice. But because of her hurt from past relationships and stuff that she didn't get over, she was yeah. pouring that into me. And I didn't realize, you know, I'm new to being married. So I need somebody yeah. to help me, yeah. you know, and in all reality, it was messing me up until I had to take a step back and be like, you know what? I need to hear from God and not from this individual. So I can't even be mad at you for what you're telling me because I'm constantly running to you for answers instead of letting the Lord settle my mind, settle my spirit, talk about it with my husband you know, and let God help change me instead of, yeah, like, girl, bye, I'm about to send my husband away over a washing machine, please. Yeah. <laughs> but a, lot, a lot of couples don't, let me say um, happy anniversary to the Mosses also. Their anniversary is today, I believe. Yes, um, yes, yes, yes. But let me say, a lot of church people do not believe in therapy. Okay. 
if you are having issues in your marriage and you are not able to find a resolve, you need to find um, someone who is neutral, a professional, because not every pastor, yeah. overseer, yeah. or apostle is validated or right. certified to counsel. Or qualified, that's right. Trust the woman of God. Listen to what she's saying. She's telling the truth. Trust the prophet. They also may have motives and gaps. That's that's, uh, when you go to uh, bishops or or your pastor, um, you know sometimes <laughs> it's better to go to the to the one that has the clinical uh, experience to help you in those areas. Because you know sometimes if we if we're just giving examples from the Word of God, you know there's some things that people go through that's not in the Bible. Correct. And you mm -hmm. know. It, it comes from, um, you know, some issues that they may might be having, you know, mental issues or uh, physical issues or whatever that somebody can help them identify what those problems are. And, you know, I think you you were referring that question. Were you referring that question to leaders? Where do leaders go to? Yes. Yeah. You know, if, if me and my wife were having a problem, I really don't know of a, um, a, a well, I mean, it, it might be a few uh, bishops or pastors that we trust. But, but I'm not going to that. But you know, <laughs> my wife would go to that. But I, I don't think I would either because, no, like you said, we, we I need, don't... you need that neutral um, uh, person. Neutral, yes. yes. <laughs> she said, I'm not <laughs> going to that. Just so they can tell her about herself. Because here's the thing um, you, you need someone that really doesn't know you. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And unless they are a certified spiritual counselor. Yes. I need to see papers. I need to, <laughs> it needs to have sheep skin. Um, but, I, but I'm big on education. Uh, but it needs to be certified because they need to be able to put their finger on what the root of it may be. And mm -hmm. when mm -hmm. you already know individuals, you may not be able to, even if you're a prophet, you may not be able to tap in correctly because mm -hmm. as we know, mm -hmm. sometimes prophets will take advantage of the vulnerabilities of the couples and have them pitting against each other. And there will be a split and one is at another church, another one is at, at the other church because they were going through and then they go into the house. Apost just like you said, apostle said, I need to do this. No, that's not gonna work in this house. That may work in their house, but it, it it's not, there's nowhere in scripture where the apostles said to people who were married, you go back to your house and you do A, B, and C. There are principles that work from the word of God. But as uh, Bishop said, sometimes people actually may be having a mental disorder. They may be depressed. They may be going through something physical that's causing them, uh, when, when you get to a certain age, you have um, hot flashes. Uh, men over 40, we understand through through nature that the testosterone goes down. Well, if they're angry because they can't perform a this, that, and other, it's nothing you can do. They need to go to some, uh, someone clinical. To a doctor, right. So right. the same thing, it happens with emotional care, um, with, our, with our emotions or with um, in our relationship. You need someone who's clinically can view it. Now, again, you can go to people who have an anointing to coach, um, an anointing to counsel, but you have to really discern and be on one accord because I'm not, I'm not calling anybody that my husband is not saying that he trusts. Does that, does that make sense? And again, you have to know people's backgrounds because some, some women have really been abused. And so yeah. they, you know, they're like, listen, don't take that, don't this, that's so petty, that's this, that, and the other. But if that's what that, if he wants that, he wants to protect you. A man's first instinct is to protect. So they may be seeing something that you can't see. And just like you said, I mean, sometimes we've been single so long, we're, we're selfish in certain areas. So you actually have to learn how to merge the two into one and that takes time and as i said you will not know if you love them for real 
until <laughs> till you test it until it's been tested and then you have the merging and you want there to be a cohesive merging together um so that doesn't happen without communication and sometimes you may need help doing that pastor to the to the single woman that's out there looking for a man and um they may not know why it's not happening what would you say to them i don't know if y'all can take what i'm gonna say <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I teach, I teach single women that they, they need to know how to date. I think in date. the church, I think in the church, we have not taught, um, dating. Um, and yes, we, we had, we had, we had this conversation, I believe a couple of weeks ago and Bishop was saying, now, when you see it in scripture, you don't see dating, you see betrothals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see arrangements. We are not in that time. So a lot of times um, we don't understand how to date. We're going, they're going into dating and going straight into sex. Um, right. Going straight into whatever. They just want to live whatever kind of way they want to live. Now, if you are in the church, I find it the other way. They're at the altar praying for a husband. No, you need to be at the concert. You need to be, you know, you need to be, you need to have a life where you are living, not mm -hmm. sinning, not sin, but be cultured. Find out the activities that are going on in your city and get there. Activities where single men are gonna be. The uh the derby, Kentucky Derby, or whatever they call it, the, the horse. <laughs> Um, the horse race. That, I think they got. Yeah, a you got. It's the derby. It's that, yeah. It's the derby. But they have uh wonderful status men who are single mm -hmm. that have money because anything to do with horses, they have some money. But <laughs> but you can't be like, nah, I can't go to. Uh, so many times we put restrictions on where we go and how we. Uh, again, I believe in dating, and I, me personally, I believe you start off as friends. And so for me, you're not um, bolting yourself down with one person when you just met them. You just met them. And now y'all, you think that you all should be exclusive to one another and you've only met one time. You've only gone out one time. That's just a friend. Don't put a label on it. Have friends until you find out who is the one that you like and he likes you. Then you can then you can put that exclusivity on it. You know we see that in the church a lot. As soon as a, a single brother join, and they be like, "Oh God, see that's gonna be my husband." And like you don't even know the brother. Come on. Hey, I'm gonna go into my uh, Steve Harvey mode. Uh, what? What you say? Uh, <laughs> huh? Um, listen, ladies, I'm gonna tell you a secret. I'm gonna tell you a secret about men in church. If you meet a man in church and he's single. He has a lot of women in his phone. Or really? he gay. Or he's oh, gay. Yeah. <laughs> or he gay. If he's straight, if he a straight man in the church and you giggly about him, you ain't the only one that's in his cell phone. That's why I'm to, telling them to get we out. We used to call it black book back in the day. Get out. They need we used to, to get call out. it the black book. But if you're looking at a single man in the church, if he's straight, he got a lot of ones running after him. So don't get all caught up. You know, all you know, caught up in the air, thinking like, cause you ain't the only one yeah. that's out there trying to get him. There's a well, whole lot of fish out there that's putting the bait out, trying to catch him. There's a lot but, of them trying to catch him. But appreciate men. Yes. Mm -hmm. Appreciate a man as a man. Get rid of your list. When you okay. all, Ooh, the, the Bible the says, list. Marry, list. Marry, marry the wife of your youth. If yes. you're young, you're starting out together. Just make sure he has a vision. He may not have the money yet, but what is his vision? 
you can mm -hmm. help him become the millionaire as a help yes, me. Yes, help yes, yes. Help him meet the vision. Have a vision together, a collective vision. But don't put all these lists up here. You're 21. You want him to have his own house. You want him to have a uh, hundred thousand dollars. Yes, yes. You know all of these things. And I'm not saying there's something wrong with that. But don't look at that. Look at the heart. God could have you a, just like women can be diamonds in the rough. There are many men that are diamonds yes, in the rough. Yes, and women yes. have overlooked them, especially in the church, overlooked them because they didn't meet a certain status and stop falling in love with people's anointing. If you are in the church, most people's anointing is up here. Their integrity down here. Because Helpless, Holy gifts, Ghost. Helpless. Gifts comes without repentance so you can't fall in love with a gift and then they go home and they stand with mama you understand <laughs> i'm not saying it's anything wrong if he stand with mama and has a vision that might and he just helping her in the house so you got to really change your mindset value a man that has a vision and i'm telling you nothing can stop you you'll be successful Amen. And that that is so true, uh, Pastor, because um, I know a lot of great men that took a woman that wasn't meant to be their wife, but they did it because they wanted to be married. And then they realized they saw themselves in a hell of a mess. And now they're trying to figure out how I'm going to get myself out of this mess. See, we always think it's the women that in that position, but it's a lot of men. Because see, unfortunately, every woman ain't meant to be a wife. Mm. It's a lot of women out there that 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 can't handle being a wife because it's they, a they certain may, they're level. not ready to be a wife. Right. Yeah, they, they, they teach you because they we came out as wives. They teach you boo. Adam, Adam was taught. I mean, I'm just inserting this. Adam. <laughs> was by himself. Mm -hmm. When Eve came out of the rib, she was automatically a wife. A That's wife. what she's created to be. I believe every woman has the potential and ability to be, but she needs to be taught how to be. But that's something people will teach you that you need to be married, but they won't teach you how to be a wife. Uh -huh. And see, Pastor, what add to it. What I'm saying is the reason why I say some are not because unfortunately some of them grow up in um, a, a situation where they don't see positive women with, with men. You know, all they hear is you'll see three generations of women saying, ain't no men no good. Ain't yeah. no man that. And so grandma I'm saying that. Great grandma saying that, mama saying that, now the daughter saying that. So they they don't have nowhere to reach because all they're hearing is what men ain't. Correct. I tell women on Facebook, there ain't no men no good. It's not true. Use a lie because <laughs> I know I'm good. I didn't say I was perfect, but I know I'm good. You yeah. know what I mean? I we see another three, good man good right there, yeah. and I'm raising three good men. But the unfortunate part is some of the people that's being raised and trained nowadays are not being taught what the image of a good man and a good woman is. So we see a continual generational curse of negative people. But that's the, that's the key. Now, if we're talking about the kingdom and the church, that's where the kingdom marriages need to step up because they need to be trained and delivered from that mindset. And they can be by the power of the Holy Ghost. They can be, but they have to be willing to be one, one person in that relationship can make a decision that this marriage is going to be transformed, not by mind nor by power, but by his spirit. spirit and, yes, when, yes, when, yes. and you can start off committed to that and then begin to introduce. Now, if they're stubborn and they just, you know, witchy and just not going to change both ends, 
then what God has put together, let no man put asunder. If God didn't put it together, that's why we have a decree for divorce. God said, listen, I didn't mean for there to be divorce from the very beginning. I created them female and male. But because of the hardening of hearts, I allowed there to be divorce. So it's very important. And the reason why I bring that up is because there are some people in terrible, horrible marriages yes. that yeah. may not be repaired. It may not be repairable because there's an unbelieving spouse. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, so yes. What we're talking about is training. So even if you're married, you can be, your mind can be transformed. But yes, if you're not a believer, you're not going to believe you can be transformed. And so if you're a raggedy person, you're going to be raggedy as, or if you have a raggedy mindset, mindset. or a pussy mindset, or yes. ghetto mindset, yes. or traveling yes. mindset, yes. whatever it may be, um, uh -huh. these housewives that are not wise, mindset that'll <laughs> tell you, you know, you need to go back and tell your husband this, and then next thing you know, the ones that are married, they're divorced because they're listening to single women. Yes, so yes. We, you know, there's that, I understand what you're saying, but please, I want to encourage those that may be going through something. If you are a believer and they're a believer, I believe you can make it. But if they've hardened their hearts, you know, you just may have to say, Lord, help me and, and, and go on and be free. You know, the, the thing I try to convince or convey unto uh, single people that are in uh, the premarital stage or engaged or marriage counseling is yeah. that this... The number one thing in any marriage, especially between two believers, is Jesus has to be the glue. Uh, Your relationship with Christ is the on. glue. Come if on. if you <laughs> love Jesus and he loved Jesus and he loved Jesus and she loved Jesus, there is absolutely no reason why you can't make it. Because if he's the center of our joy, if he's the one that walks with us and that talks with us and that tells us everything we need to know, then how can he then not keep us? He said he will keep you if you want to be kept. So if you want to be kept and Jesus is the center, then you'll make it. But both of you got to be on the same page. And have a teachable spirit because you don't know everything. That you part. have to keep yourself humble as, as husband and wife. Stay humble. Stay teachable. Your, your husband may be able to teach you something, even if you have a doctorate degree and they only have yes. a high school diploma. Uh -huh. right. But if you are putting yourself, don't ever think so highly of yourself that you don't have a teachable spirit. I believe in even in the fivefold that you should be willing um, to come to a place and, and be empty. Sometimes we visit, you know, you how you visit churches and people be sitting there discerning. I got to discern the atmosphere first. You don't <laughs> have to discern no atmosphere. That's what the Holy Ghost is for. <laughs> so they, don't, they don't participate in the service because you're so mm -hmm. deep. You came in full of yourself. But I, whenever I go into the atmosphere, I go in empty. Empty, yes. Because my Holy Ghost will reject what is not of God. Yes, I don't have amen. to, I don't have to be so boastful and egotistical that I, I ain't moving. They ain't have nothing. That won't nothing. I mean, what is wrong? And we do that in our marriages. Uh -huh. you, ain't, you can't tell me nothing about that. I know now that area, I know. Maybe you don't know now. No, you don't. You, no, you maybe don't. what you did know is obsolete. Mm -hmm. Maybe you need to upgrade in that area. Yeah, upgrade. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and you know, Pastor, when 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 we build, and, and we as the saints of the Most High, when we build that relationship first with Christ and then with each other, when 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 she, when she go up, That's I go it. up. That's when it. I go up, she go up. When the Spirit start dealing with her, I can't help. But to feel that same connection 
Because we are connected. Connected. And, and that's we're not how jealous. You not jealous yes. of each other. Connected. Yes, connected. Con Pastor, Pastor, when I preach, the loudest person I hear is this one right beside me. You better go ahead. You saying it. All right. <laughs> tell them like it is. I tell them if you got if you don't have nothing to say, you ain't the one. I tell them that it's single. If they're not pushing you, single, if they out on the field, I'm hollering. I'm screaming. If you are <laughs> if he on the organ, he is the chief of musicians. Do you understand? I don't care who in the house. I don't care what <laughs> organist, what piano playing out. He is the chief. You understand? Yes, so if you yes. don't know how to root and cheer, if they're not in your, that's how you'll know they're in your corner. If Amen. they're silent during the times of celebration for you, they're, it, no, you're, you're not. Yeah, you gotta look around. And that's, that's both Jack ways, like you said. Pastor Jackie Gentry from New Jersey said, thank you for this because the Holy Ghost told me to stop telling my business and just pray about it. I literally just heard this and felt it in my spirit. What a confirmation. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Terry. Terry said, thank you for saying happy anniversary and teach about dating and courting. People don't do that anymore. Yes. Yes. Uh, Anthony, AJ said, this is a crazy, the crazy thing is a lot of men and women haven't seen successful marriages to mimic. And that is so true. Yes. That is so true. Yes. Yes. Um, that's the example that you gave earlier about generations of women just man bashing. Yeah. So yeah. when somebody do get married, they don't know how to, to act or to respond. And that's why I, you know, have pushed for me and my wife, no matter what we went through, that our survival is not just about our survival, mm -hmm. but our survival is the survival of ministry. Yes. And the yes. last thing I want to do is for God to look at me and say, I lost people because y'all didn't survive. Mm -hmm. Listen, it's yes. so many people in leadership that they got to take that into account and God going to hold them responsible for the people that get lost because they don't do the things that's necessary for them to be the example for the people that look up to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we're trying to put forth a false sense of happiness. When right. you are going through a storm, you don't storm. need to try to act like everything That's is right. okay. That's it's right. not That's okay. Right. Get yourself some counseling where you can be vulnerable and tell the truth and use the tools that you are given. So many times people come for counseling. We give them the tools. They come back the next week. We give them an assignment. We give them homework come back the next week. I didn't have time to do it. Listen, Joker, your, <laughs> your marriage is, uh, and your family. Yes, you make time. urgent. Yes, you work, make time. Work, you take PTO in order to do this homework. This woman wants to leave you. You've cheated on her. You've been this, you know, whatever the situation may be. Woman, look, you're not taking care of him. You, you're trying to keep back sexual activity from him to control him to get him to do this whenever you want him to do something you mm -hmm. pull back you don't do that do that's this right. homework fight for your marriage contend Amen. for the faith that's of your marriage Amen. not just Amen. not just in the church but for the family amen amen this is so good I listen know, we sure. usually don't we usually don't even go this long but oh my God, like I said, it's so many comments and I am learning. I'm learning. I don't know if anybody else learning something, but I'm learning on tonight. And this is so good. And this is a, a conversation that needs to continually happen because we can't get it all and we can't get it all in one night. That's right. And that's right. I thank you guys so much. Like I said, we do the Life Discussion Podcast because we want ministry to be more than just Sunday morning, more than just talking about Daniel yes, and the lion's yes, den. We yes. want it to be real. We want real. it to be raw. We yes. want it to be relatable. And we want to help people. Like when you leave, 
church on Sunday morning, whether you're doing it virtually or in person, and you get home, we want you to be the, that, that couple that if you're going through something, it's okay, but you can get help. If you're going yeah. through something physically, we want you to know, go get help. Go get We're not going to just say, oh, go pray about it and don't give you no tools. We want to provide you for the what tools practical tools and life application with biblical principles. Yes. So if you need some more of this, the, we are available to, to help and, and, and counsel with you and talk with you. Bishop and pastor are available. And again, there. what's the name of your show that come on on Thursdays? Covenant Conversations. Covenant Conversations on Thursday evening at what time? 7.30. At 7.30, Covenant Conversations at 7.30. So if you guys want to get some more help, you guys want to hear some more conversations, you may be on here by yourself and you want to bring your spouse to listen yes. and yes. comment and ask questions because we want all of you to be successful. We want to be successful. Inbox your questions. Inbox. Yes, she's yes. Uh, Inbox yes. your questions. Because that's important. You may not want to ask the question. Openly. On live. On yep. live. It's okay. It's confidential. I, w I need to say this. It's confidential. We're not sharing names. We're not sharing this, that, and the other. The, the conversation is conf uh, confidential. We're not going to say, oh, we had so-and-so ask this question. We'll just ask it generally, or that will be our general topic. I think people need to understand that uh, ministry is a safe place, that they can trust leaders again. People have right, lost their trust. Right. You know, and, and uh, uh, I'm on the same page with you, uh, Pastor, because um, I just announced it today that starting in May, um, like like you hear on the radio with Strawberry Letter, well, yes. I'm, I'm starting to ask Pastor Harry. <laughs> and I'm going to address yeah. the different questions once a week on yes. Facebook. It might be me or my wife might be with me. Yeah, and, um, I, sometimes I'd be scared what he's going to say, y'all. That's why I'd be in the background. <laughs> Don't be scared. Don't be scared, girl. Come on. <laughs> she know I'm real. She know I'm real. So, you know what I mean? I, I get down in people's business, you yes. know? And, and, and I, I'm, I'm doing the same thing like you're doing. You know, I'm not putting people's business out there. I ain't going to say what city you from. I'm just going to say that a brother reached brother, out to me. The deacon from St. John Baptist <laughs> Church. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I ain't gonna Listen. put you in comments, but if, if you got questions, you know, you can go to newhopeftc.org and leave your questions there. And if you can't find it, um, hit me up on my inbox and Facebook or Instagram. And, you know, I'm going to start answering questions. I'm going to do it once a week, you know, until I get too many. And I might start doing it once a day if I get enough questions to come through because I want to help everybody, right. not just the married people. I want to help single people. Yes. I want to help other people. I want to help the people that come to church and feel like they're not comfortable. You know, yes. the, the yes. homosexual, the lesbian, yes. the gay, the robber, the stealer, the, the adulterer, the, the, the pedophile. The That's what the gospel you know, is about. I, I want the whole rainbow. Send me in your questions. You yes. know, and, and I'm going to try to do what I can to help lead and guide you according to the word of God into according to common sense. I'm gonna try to combine the word of God and common sense into one so that we can bless people's lives. Me and Pastor Stacy want to do a, bless people's lives. And I believe that's what you and Bishop are doing about blessing Thank people's you. lives. So um, do you want to leave your uh, social media information down for the people? Do you put it in there? Oh, no, I didn't put it in. Oh, okay. It's basically our Facebook. Uh, uh, so they can... It's just the Facebook profile, Martina Eccles, Centennial Eccles, um, Instagram, it's the same thing, Martina Eccles. Uh, Bishops, though, is Trey Eccles. Trey Tones. Oh, Facebook or Instagram? That's Instagram. Facebook is just our name, Centennial Eccles, um, Martina Eccles. Anyone that's um, on here tonight um, that's connected um, with us, please sow into this ministry. So into um, Pastor uh, uh, Stacy, Pastor Harry, uh, what's your cash app? You guys are so so into so where you want to go. You want a successful marriage? 
Now, don't take your tithe away from your ministry, but you need to plant that seed into good ground. This is good ground. They've gone through some things. They've seen some things. So where you want to go. Are y'all with me on here? I'm, I'm speaking to those because I believe in sowing. And I believe that this, this is good. I, I believe that for anyone, you know, Moss Mail, that's what the mail is about. You know, they, they <laughs> feel what, what Pastor um, Harry is talking about. But I do believe as you sow, you will grow. Um, and I believe that that harvest, for those of you that are on here that are single, I just speak prophetically into your life. Take this information from the tonight. Um, put Get out there. Stop. I mean, you have closed the blind and just given up. But I'm declaring unto you on tonight. Yes, and you release the fragrance. Women, release the fragrance of femininity release that fragrance, men, release the security, become secure in who you are and your God identity as a king, your God identity, woman of God or woman as a queen. I promise you there's an attraction there and, and we are releasing the realm of marriage. We Amen. are releasing, Amen. we are coming into and agreement. And That's if you good. are married, we speak Amen. wholeness. We yes. speak reconciliation. We speak forgiveness. We speak abundance. We where there's economic challenges. We speak the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and yes, add no sorrow. If no there's sorrow. physical ailments, we bind every spirit of disease Amen. and infirmities, and we speak light to the areas that Amen. feel like they've been. They died. We speak life and resurrection power in yes, the name Lord. of Jesus to every yes, marriage. Lord. And for those that are doing just fine, we speak upgrade. We speak overflow. <laughs> we speak yes, more Lord. than enough. We speak the wealth realm in the name of Jesus. Your ministries will not die. Your marriage will not die. We speak generational blessings and in generational blessings. Uh, wealth upon your children and your children's children for a hundred, for a thousand generations. And it is so in Jesus. It is so. Amen. In Jesus' name. And we come into agreement with everything that Pastor Martina prayed on tonight. Thank you guys so, so much for being a part of this. I, I, I'm, a, I'm excited. I'm excited. Listen, again, this is the longest we've ever did a life discussion um, podcast. Is usually run maybe an hour yeah. or we go a little. Oh my God. No, but this is good. You, no, this is good. You broke a record. This is this is the first time. And I people like stay to make history. I like to listen. Make and people stay engaged and they yes, still talking, yes, Pastor. Yes. Wow. They still talk. Wow, wow. They still talking. So that goes to show that this was divine order. This yes. was divine coming together, and this is what the people need. Yes. No, because, yeah. you know, people always talk about how it's just junk on Facebook, but this this is edifying yes. to the kingdom yes. and it's edifying to the body. Like you said, we we need marriages. Anthony, yes. these are marriages that people can look at and mimic. Again, yes. we're not perfect, but we seeking at the helm no. and we doing it according to biblical principles. And just to, to recap, we talked about love and respect how the women want love and the husbands want respect so we need to have love we need to have respect we talked about traveling together so when you're going out to minister take your spouse there's nothing wrong with having assistance and adjutants but ain't nobody gonna serve you like your man ain't nobody Ooh. gonna serve you like your woman amen oh. and if you're in ministry together pastoring, the bishop, the apostle. When you get home, you husband and wife. Remember that. Your husband and wife. Listen, they have a name. Call them have, by their that's name. Right. That's <laughs> Not right. That title. <laughs> and listen, I love what you said about Bay. Being Adam's Eve. The, that's that's your bay right that there. Good. Yes. That that but this is my biggie, and he knows. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's my biggie. That. That's, that's I don't call him past at home. I don't yeah. call him uh elder at home. I don't call him deacon at home. I'll be like, hey, biggie. Right. Yeah. <laughs> call his name. Take family vacation. 
going to conferences, going to the convention. We all for that, but make sure you make time for yes. one another. Yes, make time. Even if you mom and dad, lock the door. Send what you say, Pastor, send a kid to grandmom house. Put on some Luther, you know. Turn off the light. <laughs> <laughs> Put the, for my young folk, put on some tank if you're a young man. <laughs> We're, us sanctified for might not be, some of y'all sanctified might not be able to take tank, but some <laughs> of need tank. They can't do it. And that's look why you wait until you get married. Off. That's where you wait until that's you get married because, listen, so Anthony I'm Hamilton. I'm talking about Mary. Anthony Hamilton. Listen, listen he's anointed for us. <laughs> put, on, put on some Trey songs. You know, Come on. I'm it's another brother. I used to call his name out, but they said I can't say his no, name. No, you can't no say more. his name no more. <laughs> Listen, R. Kelly is R. Right. Don't say his name. <laughs> we don't like Robert. We don't like Robert, but we still we don't like, like R. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> we still yep. like Ariel now. <laughs> we talked about intimacy. We talked about sex. Yes, pastors, shepherds, don't be afraid to talk to your people about sex. Marry people. Church people still need intimacy, still need to have sex. Watch out for the groupies. Listen. Yes. The groupies need to be saved too. We're not saying shun them, but you watch as well as pray. Protect your husband, yes. protect your wife, because there's yeah. male groupies out there too. Yeah. And as Bishop said, all men are not one divid one dimensional. So don't think they're just attracted to how you look. They're attracted to your brain. They're attracted to your femininity. They want substance as well. Yeah. And as always, we always talk about ladies. Pastor said, get rid of that list. You're making a list of what you want him to bring to the table. But some brothers want you to bring something to the table. You want him to make six figures and you ain't got a job. What are you bringing to the table? I had to tell my husband people, I was like, hey, I am the table. I wasn't a fixer upper. He shot no. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know, and the Holy Spirit is the headship. The Holy Spirit is the headship. Women of God, trust your man of God. Man of God, trust your woman of God. Yes. And be respectful to one another. Yes, yes. Tank is a must. I see you. They still who said uh -oh. it? Who said it? I need to make things. sure they marry. Who said <laughs> hey, Anthony Gunter, oh. Tammy, Tammy, Richard Wilkins, Wilkins. Said, Sid, Overseer Wilson. Wilkins. W-I-L-K-I-N-S. Oh, okay. I was getting ready right. to say. Don't do this. And I need to make sure my folks is married on here. Come <laughs> <laughs> well, Teresa Carter, I think Teresa Carter is one of your daughters. She said, who is Tank? <laughs> that's my mama. That's Oh, that's, that's your spiritual mama? mama. So All right, mama. mama. No, that's my real mama. But she's oh, a your mama. She's okay. an And she don't know who Tank is. <laughs> <laughs> mama, you just stay with Al Green, mama. Don't you? Stay with Al Green. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. She... She can go ahead and watch the uh, who's that verses on Sunday, Earth, Wind, and Fire, and uh, oh yeah, um, who was my man? The Osley brother. Osley brother. Round Osley look like he's twenty five. That's, that's my intercessor. I need her to be right <laughs> on. I don't need her watching no verses. Stay, stay, right stay where you are, Mama. Stay at that office. <laughs> Yeah, so thank you guys again. I, I love this. I'm, you got up, you got me turned up. I'm turned up tonight. <laughs> well, hey. don't do something with that, that energy now, though. <laughs> we gonna have to do something together a little bit more. Yes, yeah. You know, I we, love have, it. we love it. We have had a great connection on this evening. Yes. And uh <laughs> Bishop, I definitely want to make sure once we finish that I get your information, you know, because um you know, I think, you know, this would be something great that uh, me and you can build off yeah. as well. Um, yeah, because me and Pastor Martina, we already here. We need to get you on. <laughs> <laughs> and it's crazy because we've been friends on Facebook for a while, but just never really talk, you know. But I thank God for uh, bringing us together. Yeah, and we thank God for such a great evening yeah. and that he will allow two wonderful, awesome, great, men and women of God and, and, and just jewels in the gospel to take out time when they even to spend time with us. But we're so grateful. Great. We're so thankful. And we hope that so many that 
watch this evening and even those that will watch on YouTube, because this will also be on our YouTube page within the next few days on New Hope FTC on uh, YouTube. So any of your members that didn't see this, you can send them there awesome. and uh, we'll, we'll uh, tag you to the YouTube page as well, okay. you know, and, you know, we just want to be a blessing and, and we want to help these married people to oh survive and we want to help those that's not married that want to be married to know what it takes. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's good to know what you got to do before you do it, then to do something and you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Have to just sort by trial by error. That's <laughs> it's it's, it's so much harder trial by error as it, opposed to- Fake it till you make it. You know, having somebody to say, this is the way you go. Listen, as a football coach, it makes it so much easier when I give, we give the kids the game plan and they follow it. Then when they try to do something on their own, and don't know what they're doing. I love you it. know, so that's 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 what God wants us to do, to lead and guide the people through all truth so that God can get the glory. Because it's not about Stacy, it's not about Harry, it's not about the bishop or the pastor. It's about God getting the glory. That's so we thank you guys. We thank everyone that watched, any and everybody that want to come and be a blessing, as Pastor said. You can go to our cash app. It's already on the screen. It's already on there. And yeah. we have PayPal. We have Zelle. Any way you want to come through. If I you just got see it, one, I'm sorry. I got to acknowledge one more person. When we was talking about uh, Richard, Richard Wilkins, he is the son of the late Kevin Wilkins. Remember, he was the minister of music. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. All right. We all grown up now. I apologize I didn't recognize you. I know exactly who you are, Richard. God bless you, and we loved your dad. And, and we love we love you too, and I, I'm so grateful that God has allowed us to, you know, connect on this level, and I believe it's just higher heights and deeper depths Amen. in I God. And we pray that each and every one have a great night. Everyone sleep well. And if you living next to your husband or your wife, don't roll over to the other side. <laughs> lean over and put a little something on them. Come on, lean, lean, <laughs> lean with it. Put a little something on them and let them know how much you love them. Because it just take a few words to say, I love you. Amen. You know, I love you can change the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> can change the atmosphere. So, you know, as we close, Bishop, do you have anything you want to say? No, we, we've covered a lot tonight, so I'm not going to get y'all started again. Uh, we'll wait till <laughs> next time. <laughs> but no, just uh, there was one thing you were saying. Um, you know, uh, even in jobs that we take, you have to have a, have a degree, you know, for some um, essential jobs. Um, so that means there's training that goes into certain positions that we take. Yes. And marriage is one of those things that people don't really get adequate training in, but they mm -hmm. expect to be successful. So yes. please take advantage of these opportunities mm -hmm. that are coming on Facebook and by way of YouTube uh, through these sessions. They are training sessions that can help you where you have uh, any questions in, in relationships. Because like you said, you know, we've we've all had our ups and downs and we've gone through. Um, just because you see us smiling here today does not mean that we have not been at a place where you might be. Yeah. So, um, you know, this is just an opportunity for us to pour into you. And uh, please take advantage of these opportunities. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you all for watching. Uh, when will we do health aware mental health awareness? It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. I tell the saints all the time, I believe in prayer and pills. Take your medicine so we don't have to hold up the prayer line. <laughs> That's right. That's right. But we're going to stop. We're going to stop. You know, they always say the preacher got to have three closings. We don't have four closings. We're going to stop. <laughs> well, <laughs> before we close, I just, oh, just want to say. personal savior. <laughs> on, on May the 1st, I will be officially installed as pastor and consecrated pastor. So I, this is my invitation to you guys, you know, to come and I'll get your information after we finish, Bishop. I would love for you, you and Pastor to be there. And May the 4th, we will be celebrating four years. Woo! New Hope FTC is going to be four years old. Awesome. And we are growing and we are excited and we love 
you know, our New Hope FTC family. So, you know, if, if y'all service is over by then, our service is going to be starting at one o'clock on May the 2nd. Okay. And on uh, May the 1st, it'll be at six o'clock. So. All right. AJ said, now unto him. <laughs> my deacon is <laughs> my deacon is closing his house. So <laughs> taking the lights. So turn the lights on. Time to turn the lights off. <laughs> the the, the right, deacon is going to tell it. Or, or Facebook, the deacon <laughs> like, now not to him. <laughs> that's their assignment. That's, that's what they <laughs> preach. Keep it in order. All right. <laughs> well, Pastor already prayed, so we're not going to pray again. We're just going to end it with good night, and we love you all. Good night. Y'all be blessed. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you. All right.